Lockhart Lions as Medina Valley and Lockhart getting ready to square up in the first game of district for both teams. Medina Valley comes in with a 2-1 and one record. Lockhart also with a 2-1 and one record. I'm Jared Lucky along with Mari Stein. And we'll have uh, Garrison Garza running the, uh, running the board for us here this evening. And I'd also like to throw a shout-out to Brendan back at our k Bipe Studios helping us out here this evening. And, uh, Mari, we've got first game of district here upcoming. Uh, it's a nice night for a ball game. They predicted rain earlier, but it's gone away. It doesn't look like it's going to rain, at least for the time being. Um, and, a, and a good night for a ball game here at Open District. We could handle a little bit of rain here if it wanted to, Jared, because you're at a, on a turf field. But the clouds don't show any signs of there being any kind of electricity in the air except for on the football field. So there's no lightning anywhere close. So we should be ready to go here for this week four, but week one in district play. So, Jared, uh, watched the JV last night at Medina Valley. And the JV pretty much manhandled uh, the Lions as, as the, in the second half. It was a running clock uh, because of the way the game was going. The Panthers took charge early. The first three drives, they scored and never looked back. And Lockhart had a tough time moving the ball. And we talked to the coaches. Uh, Coach Eric Sosa was uh, kind enough to join us in our Sports for Supper at Sammy's on Wednesday night. And it's a mirror image of both teams run the same type of offense. And me and you talked on the way <clears throat> down here. It's going to come down to the big plays and who out tricks the other ones. What new wrinkles are they going to put into this offense? And, and you stated, even during the coaches show, that you thought Medina Valley was a better passing team than, than what we're going to see tonight in Lockhart. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that might be the difference in the ball game is that Medina Valley can throw the football when they need to. Um, one, of the, one of the big things about Medina Valley here is when, when you have Gibson pound the ball up the middle the way he can and you have Masters with his speed getting to the outside and able to move, that opens up your passing game because you know that their defense is going to key on those guys, and when you start doing those play fakes and that play action and get your get your receivers out in some space, it's going to leave them open because those linebackers are coming up to deal with Gibson and Masters. There's wide open space over the middle of the field, and the Medina Valley is going to have to take uh, take opportunity of that here this evening. And, and what we also talked about, too, <clears throat> is – you know, like you say, you pound number 45, James Gibson, down their throat, boom, boom, boom. And then you come with the trap with Pardo or Santos right up the gut. And that's a that's a weapon because we've seen uh, Wesley and, and uh, uh, Solis both score yep. from that formation. And then, not only that, then you add number 22 into the mix, and he's suited up again tonight. He should be healthy. He should be ready to go for the whole game in Logan Masters. And we know how big of a home run threat he is. Yep. And I'm sure the Lions have, have watched. But it's just the same case, Jared, as, as we talked about in the first week against uh, Waco La Vega. You can practice and, and try to dictate the speed, but until you're on the field and you see it firsthand, it, it's hard for your scout team or your JV team or your B team to pretend to be him, yep. you know, and, and practice for it. It's a difference between him and somebody just trying to be him. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we know that Lockhart has one of the top running backs in the Austin area coming into this. I believe he's, what, number one in 5A Division Two coming into this game in rush yards. Um, so we know he has a good uh, – He's able to run the football. Their only loss was to Brady at the on the first game of the season. They lost by a point. So this is a team that could easily be 3-0. and um, They played in some close games. They know what it's like to be in some of those. Medina Valley has been involved in some blowouts. They beat Hondo 41-11. to um, They were way ahead of Bernie before Bernie ended up coming back in the second half, but that's because Medina Valley was working on some things in that second half uh, for later on in district play in the Waco La Vega game was close up until the third quarter, and then really that speed and strength of La Vega just kind of overpowered Medina Valley. But uh, I think that was a very good at lear learning experience for the Panthers, and I look for them to, to really come out here against Lockhart. And one of the things that we touched on was that these run they both run the same type of offense. 
the defense knows what they're looking for here, and that that's the only reason why I think that this is going to be a tight ball game is because these defenses are used to being able to see that and play against it, whereas sometimes you get in situations where a team's only going to see the type of offense Medina Valley runs once a year when they play them, and they don't, they don't see that regularly. I think with Lockhart and Medina Valley seeing those – that offense on a regular basis, they're going to be able to, to tighten up, and and I think this is going to be a close, tight game. And and we had uh, we were fortunate enough to have uh, one of the offensive uh, stars from the Hondo game caught a touchdown pass in Garrett Leggett, but we also had two of the defensive men, uh, Jeremy Martinez and Hector Herrera, both linebackers, and we asked them personally. You know, you're seeing your your team right across. On the other side of the offensive ball, what are you keying on when this happens, and what are you keying on in that, when that happens? And I tell you what, Jared, they were spot on with their with their answers. They yeah. never they never wavered. We ask them each a, each three or four or five questions, and they both said exactly what they were taught. So they're going to be put in position to do it. Yep. You just got to do it. Yeah, absolutely. You're you're exactly right, and I think we're going to go ahead and take a. Quick break real quick, and we'll come back with some more pregame. You're listening to uh, Panther Football, brought to you by North Park Chevrolet, and we will continue in just a moment. We not only serve Medina Valley, we also can broadcast other schools in the area in multiple sports. If your business is interested in having us broadcast a single game or a season and you want to be part of the action, contact Jeff Stivers at 830-931-4504 or email him at jeff at mvbn.net. At North Park Chevrolet in Castroville. We offer the most exceptional experience in sales and service. Shop our large new and pre-owned selection with complimentary maintenance on new vehicles, upfront posted pricing, 10-day trade-in appraisal guarantee, and a 48-hour return policy. Our factory trained technicians will take care of you after the sale with easy menu pricing, courtesy vehicles, and a complimentary car wash with every service. Come see us at 1955 Highway 90 East or call 210-640-3184. Shop us online or schedule service at npchevy.com. Experience Chevrolet, the North Parkway. Headed out to the game? Then make a stop at your local Valley Mart convenience store. With 12 area locations, Valley Mart is always right around the corner. Fuel yourself and your vehicle with quality branded gas and diesel, snacks and fountain drinks. Always convenient, well lit with clean restrooms. Valley Mart, family owned and operated since 1984 and a proud supporter of Medina Valley Athletics and area youth sports for over 30 years. You're watching Medina Valley Football. This is the Medina Valley Sports Network. We're back here at Lions Stadium as we're getting ready for the first district matchup of the season between Medina Valley and Lockhart. Um, Medina Valley coming off that 41-11 win in Hondo last week in the rain. Um, it rained basically the entire game over there for in Hondo. Um, that game was moved from Medina Valley to Hondo at the time because of the weather and because Hondo has a turf field. Um, it's a nice field here in Lockhart, a uh, turf field here. They are mar- they're maroon and and white. Looks like that is their colors. And uh, it says lo- uh, the end zones are maroon. It says lions in white letters in the end zones. Uh, but we are on the visitor side, actually. They have a press box on the visitor side, kind of just like we do at Medina Valley. Um, and we are on the visitor side of the field, uh, Mari and myself. And uh, I think it's a nice night for a ball game. Yeah, and I want to thank Garrison Garza for running the board for us this evening. He will be running the board. Brendan will be back in the KMAC Vibe Studios uh, playing the ones and twos. But uh, thank you, Garrison, for helping out. He's going to be running the commercials and the big board for... Jared and I, and Jared, as you mentioned, we are on the visitor's side, the home side. As you look in the middle of the field, it's a double L in the middle of the field, Lockhart Lions. And just watching the warm-ups, pretty much basic uniforms for both teams. Lockhart's wearing the white pants, the maroon jerseys, white numbers, white lettering, Lions across the top. Panthers are running there, wearing their typical away jerseys, the black pants with the white top with the black numbers outlined in orange. Panthers in black in black letters across the front. So 
basic, there's nothing fancy about these two uniforms and, and the two teams and, and Jared, you know, wait for some football. Yeah. This is what we waited for all year. I know, I know the three games before that were nice, you know, and it's always nice to come off in the district play with back-to-back -back wins. That's what the Panthers are coming off, right in a two-game winning streak. And let's see if we can we can make it three to start out district play. Yeah, you're right. And we had uh, we had Coach Eric Sosa on the coaches show we had on Wednesday night, and he was talking about how important this game is to start off district with a win because when you're playing a district with Tyvee and Alamo Heights and Bernie Champion, you know four teams are going to the playoffs. And the way it looks right now, Lockhart and Medina Valley are the two teams that are going to be fighting for one of those spots. You know, but. Um, so this this is a key win here because you, you have a feeling, I mean, you have to play the games, but you have a feeling that Medina Valley should handle Uvalde and the two San Antonio teams, Memorial and Kennedy. But the the Tyvee, the Alamo Heights, and the Champion games are toss-ups. You, you don't really know. Medina Valley beat Bernie Champion at home last year. Um, hopefully Medina Valley can match that again next week as Champion will be traveling to Medina Valley once again uh, next Friday night. And you know, you really need to start off here with a win. This is a really a key game for Medina Valley. I know it's the first district game, but it's one of the biggest ones. Well, and last year the Panthers ended up ended the season with Alamo Heights in a playoff situation where the Panthers <clears throat> could actually lose the ball game, but if they didn't lose by X amount of points, mm -hmm. they were still in. So Medina Valley didn't win the ball game, but Alamo Heights didn't cover what they needed to cover, and Medina Valley went to the playoffs. I, I don't see that last game being for the third and fourth spot this year. Yeah. Because uh, we're going to end up at Carville Tyvee, the last yep. game of the season, and not going to make any predictions or anything, but that very well possibly could be for the number one spot yeah, in, this, be. in this district it, because you, you're going to have – Alamo Heights, which you played them close last year. We have a lot of people coming back. So does Alamo Heights. They got their uh, returning quarterback and his brother that was the wide receiver last year. But Medina Valley is returning a lot of key players also. So it, it's like Coach Sosa said, this game right here, you, you, you've got to beat at least two or three of those yep. five teams, and, and not to disregard Uvalde, not to disregard Memorial, not to disregard Kennedy, but those games, if Medina Valley just plays their ball game, I don't see them losing those three ball right. games, especially when we don't have to go to Uvalde. Right. Uvalde exactly. comes here, yep. and that may, means a lot, as yep. you and I it both does. know. We, Mari and I have talked about that. I mentioned on the coaches' show the other night. When you go to Uvalde, you never know what's going to happen. Especially when you go play in the Honey Bowl, it it just you don't know. There's weird things happen. It seems like they get some weird calls. Um, we've seen some two and three overtime games down there that just end on missed extra points and some weird weird things go on there. And so it's a big deal that they come to Medina Valley this year. Well, and and most of the time. <clears throat> There's no room in their press no. box, so we're, we're usually setting up in our own stands, and and with yep. the equipment we have this year, there's there's no way that that would even be be possible. And, and it's like we mentioned, Jared, when you go there, me and you both call that the twilight zone yeah. because you never know what's no. going to happen there. Yeah, absolutely, it is. It's different when you go there. We have a, a just a heads up from uh one of our other hosts that that joins us on wednesday nights uh Dwayne garza his daughter is playing volleyball right now for the medina valley varsity volleyball team and they are up two sets to none tonight so good job by the volleyball team and coach Deesa griggs as we heard from her wednesday she brought two players and hopefully they can close hopefully that they out can with close it out yep um the the panthers both teams are getting closer to coming out on the field. Um, we're probably gonna we're gonna go ahead and take a break real quick, and then we will uh, come back with some more pregame. You're listening to Panther Football on the Medina Valley Broadcast Network, brought to you by North Park Chevrolet, and we will continue in just a moment. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. 
Security State Bank has one simple goal, to be the best bank possible to the families and businesses of South Texas. We believe in superior customer service, active community involvement, fair and honest business ethics and loyalty. We've been in Castorville for a year now and we've enjoyed growing with you. Come by 1726 Highway 90 East or call us at 830-538-9898. A real person will answer because that's how we do business with common courtesy and uncommon service. Bank online at securitystbk.com. Security State Bank, South Texas. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. From the time our alarm clock rings in the morning to when we turn the lights off at night. Electricity plays an important role in our lives, but most of the time, we don't even think about it. And you don't have to, because the employees at Medina Electric Cooperative are behind the scenes making sure you get reliable, affordable electricity delivered to your house or business. Your cooperative is here for you, and we have been since 1938. Connect with Medina Electric on Facebook, Twitter, or at medinaec.org. You're watching Medina Valley Football. This is the Medina Valley Sports Network. Welcome back to Lions Stadium here, home of the Lockhart Lions. Medina Valley and Lockhart getting set to square off. Both teams 2-1 and one in the regular season. Both teams 0-0 oh oh in district as this is the first district game. And Mari's got the starting lineups from Medina Valley here to give to you. For your visiting Medina Valley Panthers, starting on the offensive side of the board, at center, junior, number 60, Spencer Payne. At strong guard, senior, number 55, Yancey Miller. At quick guard, senior, number 52, Josh Valenzuela. At strong tackle, senior, number 53, Edward Roya. At quick tackle, senior, number 74, Jonah Barrow. At strong end, senior number 80, Aaron Satello. At wide receiver, senior number 7, Garrett Leggett. Swingman is senior number 25, Jacob Salas. At fullback is junior number 45, James Gibson. And halfback is senior number 22, Logan Masters. And got in the helm for the Panthers. At quarterback is senior number 10, Alec Child. On the defensive side of the ball for the Panthers, at the tackles is senior number 88, Steele Perry, and junior number 58, Trace Ferguson. At the ends, senior number 44, Isaac Santos, and senior number 21, Dylan Fillinger. Linebackers tonight for the Panthers, junior number 34, Taylor Weir, junior number 28, Grant Snyder, and junior number 1, Dawson Grove. Corners consist of junior number 5, Tanner Bippert, and senior number 42, Dante Henry. At strong safety, junior number 9, Charlie Marsh. And at free safety, senior number 12, Cole Modulin. Place kicking tonight for the Panthers will be number 1, Dawson Grove. And the punter will be number 10, Alec Child. Those are the starting lineups for your Medina Valley Panthers. And we're, we're not going to have the starting lineups for Lockhart. We tried to give them. Unfortunately, we couldn't even get a program until about 10 minutes ago. Um, they didn't have them up here in the press box, and they weren't selling them until about... 710. Um, we actually had to send Garrison running for one to get to us so we'd at least have a roster here. But Medina Valley coming out on the field here to open up district as they've come out. We're waiting for Lockhart to come out on the field. Uh, pretty good crowd on hand for Medina Valley. And as we've mentioned before, they always travel well. In fact, at the moment, Medina Valley stands have about as many people as Lockhart's do. Well, and for the first time in many, many years at Honda. Yeah, Medina Valley actually had a few more fans than the Honda Owls did it on their side. So and, and traveling good. And you wonder sometimes, you know, it was rainy and stuff, but that's still Hondo Medina Valley. You would you would imagine that that Hondo crowd would turn out for that game, and they they just you know it wasn't it wasn't that way. And Medina Valley outnumbered them for the first time in Hondo in a long time. Um, that's one of those games where the stands are usually packed, and Medina Valleys were packed on the visitor side, but Hondos really weren't as we were right there at a bird's eye view of all of it, and they just they didn't turn out for that game. Um, I believe they're playing Marion tonight at home, uh, Hondo is, and um, the Panthers here looking to get off to a 1-0 and start in, in district play. And uh, hopefully, hopefully they can play their brand of football. And some of those turnovers we saw late in the game versus Hondo, hopefully they'll correct that this week. Um, we've talked all season about it is the, the penalties that happen at the most inopportune times. It's not just that you're, 
you're making penalties. You're doing them at the worst time possible. We saw 13 point or 12 points come off the board last week because of penalties against Medina Valley. And in a game of this magnitude, in a game that might be this close, you can't you can't be making mistakes like that. Well, and Coach Eric Sosa said so. Yeah, I mean he said as much. You know, uh, Wednesday night when he was he was on the air with us, and he he stated both both times on on the the run by the runs by Pardo and Masters that were called back both times the infraction had nothing to do with the outcome of the play it right. was something silly that on the that, opposite side of the field yeah that that had no no bearing on on what was going on during the play and it ended up costing the Panthers 12 points fortunately for Medina Valley it was 12 points they didn't need yeah but in big games like like tonight you cannot have those mistakes. No. And he also uh, said that they're they're looking forward to correcting the false starts, and that's that's what you and I were talking about mentally. You know, especially a couple of times you come off of a timeout and yep. you go out there and you false start. That can't happen. No, no, not at all. I mean, when you, especially when you come out of a timeout, like everyone should be on the same page. Then it, it's a little different than getting a play in from the sideline. You're over there. You're listening to your coach. You know exactly what you want to run. And when you come out of a timeout, you should be mentally focused. And, and that that could be what this game comes down to is who is going to be more mentally tough at the end of this football game. Um, hopefully it doesn't come to that. Hopefully Medina Valley can get up by a couple of scores and stay that way. As we know, when you run the offense that Lockhart's going to run, especially when you don't throw the ball very well, if you get down a couple of scores, it's very, very hard to fight your way back into the ball game just because you don't have that quick strike ability Medina Valley does have that we've seen them score we've seen them go 90 yards in four plays and score in less than a minute we saw it against Hondo last week so they have the ability to throw the ball where Hondo does not Um, we're going to go ahead and take a break for the national anthem and we'll be back with all the play-by-play you're listening to Panther football brought to you by North Park Chevrolet and we will continue in just a moment Here at Medina Valley Broadcast Network, we love all sports. We currently broadcast football, volleyball, basketball, softball, and baseball. We not only serve Medina Valley, we also can broadcast other schools in the area in multiple sports. If your business is interested in having us broadcast a single game or a season and you want to be part of the action, contact Jeff Stivers at 830-931-4504 or email him at jeff at mvbn.net. Peerless Equipment, your South Texas irrigation experts. Peerless Equipment specializes in sales and service of irrigation equipment to the agricultural and wildlife industries. This includes hose reels, big guns, pivot systems, underground pipelines, turbine well pumps, booster pumps, motors, valves, and an inventory of much more. Stop by one of their locations in Hondo and Pearsall or give them a call at 210-434-7867. Peerless Equipment, bringing water to you. Qualifications, rules, and limitations supply. Rates, rewards, and restrictions may vary by account. Contact institution for details. Tickets, popcorn, and sodas. That'll be $35. Cash or debit? Debit! I mean, I'd like to use my debit card, please. Uh, Can I do it? Okay. All right! Swiping now! What if paying with your debit card was always this exciting? Casasa Cashback is a free checking account that pays you for everyday debit card purchases every month you qualify. Plus, with ATM withdrawal fee refunds nationwide, that's a lot of extra cash to spend on whatever you like. Ask for free Casasa checking at Community National Bank. Member FDIC. Double T Outfitters offers deer, dove, turkey, quail, and exotic hunts in southwest Texas on over 20,000 low-fenced acres. They facilitate professional guide services, lodging, and fantastic meals while providing the best in southwest hunting. Contact Double T Outfitters to find out details about their current package hunts. Contact owner Brett Ferguson at 210-413-1597 or online at DoubleTHunting.com. You're watching Medina Valley Football. This is the Medina Valley Sports Network. Welcome back here to Lions Stadium as we're ready for the play-by-play. I think the only thing we have yet to do is the coin toss for both sides as uh, I believe it was some Lockhart students who just sang the national anthem, two or three of them. It sounded pretty good here at the stadium as the flag has left the field and we will get set for the coin toss the captains for the Lockhart Lions number 35 Alex Sosa 
number 59, Jaime Guerra, number 42, Darius Spruill, and also number 80, Spencer Nelson are the four. Well, there's actually one more. They have number. They just added one. Yep, number 21, Dequan Ellison. For Medina Valley, it's going to be number 22, Logan Masters, number 44, Isaac Santos, number 12, Cole Modling, and number 10, Alec Child are your captains for Medina Valley as they go out for the coin toss now. And we'll uh, wait and see what, what happens here and who's going to get the football to start the ball game. The visiting team always gets to call the heads or tails part of it. As, uh, what would you rather see the Panthers, offense or defense on the field first? I, I am a big believer in putting your defense on the field like first, it. getting the ball to start the second half. I like it. And as we mentioned, there is some cloud cover here, but it doesn't look like rain clouds at the moment. Um, a pretty good night here for the for a ball game. I don't see any flags at the moment flying. Uh, there is one way over here. The wind is blowing a little bit from left to right here, but nothing really strong. Panthers won the toss, Jared. Yes, they did, and it looks like Lockhart's going to receive. So Medina Valley won the toss, deferred to the second half. So we're going to see the Panther defense to start things off. And that defense for Medina Valley has been very stout this year so far, especially they, that front four. That front four and what made it special last week is the front four did their job in number 34. Had a whale of a ball game. Yes, Taylor sure Weir did. was all over the field, and that's what your linebackers' jobs are. That's what your front four is. To, is what their job is is to keep the linebackers clean, keep them to where they can make the plays in the holes. And you got three very serviceable linebackers out there tonight for the Panthers. Number one, Dawson Grove. Number twenty-eight, Snyder, and number thirty-four, Weir. And then the, the replacements that come in after them. Yeah. They're not bad either. No, they're not. <laughs> and one of the things I've noticed, and, and this is what Grant's a, a junior, I believe. Yes, um, he's Grant been playing. Yeah, and, and Grant's been playing up here on the varsity level, starting for since he was a freshman, and I believe. Dawson. Yeah, and Grant's got one of those things that you just can't teach. He's got that ability to just go to the football. He's got like, that motor. Yeah, he knows where it's at, and he's always in on the play, and, and that's what you want from your linebackers is somebody who's always around the football. Um, as Grove has it. Teed up and ready to go. The kickoffs are brought to you by Royce Grove Oil Company and Exxon. Um, as Medina Valley ready to kick this away. And Lockhart with kind of a weird formation back there as they do kick it off. It's taken at about the 9-yard line. And Lockhart starts up field and he gets out to about the 24-yard line before he's brought down by a couple of Medina Valley defenders. And there's a late, late flag that just got thrown. Wow, what was that all about? That was Caleb Jennings, number nine, on the return for Lockhart. The flag's at the 25, but it was thrown over here away from from the play. Taylor Weir was the Panther on special teams on the tackle. Personal foul. Against Lockhart. What was that all about? I never saw anything. I didn't either, but, I mean, that referee saw something, and he threw it from over here on the Medina Valley sideline. I thought, if, if anything, they were going to get Medina Valley for maybe for a sideline warning or something. Yeah, absolutely. Because there was really nothing to this side of the field. No, and that's going to move them back. The ball was spotted at the 24-yard line. They're going to move it back to, looks like, the 12-yard line. And that's where it'll be first and 10 for Lockhart from their own 12 to start the ball game. Quarterback number 10, Jackie Edwards Jr., a sophomore, hands the ball off right up the middle. A lot of room and a, maybe a touchdown-saving tackle by one of the linebackers for the Panthers. That was Snyder, number 28. And, wow, did he hit yeah. that hole quick. That that has to be – well, that is the young man that's leading the area in, in Class 5A yep, and that in was, the Austin area. That was a 10-yard gain and a first down. The ball moves up to the Medina Valley 27-yard line. It's Lockhart taking their time here, getting getting the play in. Play clock down to 15 as the Lions, they sprint straight up to the line of scrimmage, and they go quickly. They don't give that defense time to adjust. They'll hand the ball off, coming to the near side again, and that's number 34 there on the stop for the Panthers, but a pickup of about seven yards. It's going to bring up second down and three. Taylor Weir leading the charge for the Panthers along with number 42, Dante Henry. 
That's Daquan Ellison, the senior running back for Lockhart. As we mentioned, he is one. Of, he is the top uh, running back in the Austin area. So Medina Valley is going to have their hands full on defense trying to contain him here this evening. And as we mentioned before, Lockhart takes their time getting the play in, but they sprint straight up to the line of scrimmage, and then they go quickly. Out of that slot T, they're going to hand the ball off. Reverse right side and a lot of room to run. Out across the 45, across midfield, and he's brought down. That's number five, Alex Thompson on the carry for Lockhart. And they'll be in Medina Valley territory, first and ten from the Panther 46-yard line. Dawson Grove on the stop for the Panthers along with Tanner Bippert, but a lot of room to run yep. on that. That's the first time they've ran to the right side of the formation, a little sweep there, and got around the end. A good job by their tight end, cutting down on our defensive end. Yeah, and that, that really was a, a good open field tackle there for the Panthers because if he makes him miss, that's a touchdown. They come out now with two wide receivers out here to the left side. Lockhart moves right to left, and that time Ellison is met right away and dropped for a loss. They're going to give him forward progress to the 47-yard line. It'll be second down and 11 coming up for Lockhart. Ferguson and Santos on the stop there for Medina Valley. Hit him right in the hole, right at the point of the handoff. So a good job by the Panthers' defensive front. Finally getting some pressure. Yep. Yeah, and I, I think that's going to be one of the the keys here for the Panthers is they're going to shut that middle down. It's going to be how are you going to contain them and keep them off the edges. If And they talked about that in the coaches' show, forcing them back to the inside to contain them. Right back to the line of scrimmage. They hand the ball off and hit and dropped for a gain of a yard. That was number 24, Jesus Aldana on the carry. And he was met, and, I mean, he was stuck and dropped. Number 34, Taylor Weir just introduced himself to him right there. Yeah, absolutely. Said, hello, my name is Taylor. I'll be seeing you again and again. And it's going to bring up third down and ten, and this is what you want is Lockhart in third and long situations where they're not their most comfortable. Edwards and Romero for Lockhart bring the play in from the sidelines as the Lions come right back to the line of scrimmage. Third down and ten. Tight formation, no wide receivers. They're going to hand the ball off going right side. A lot of room to run. He's going to have a first down. And he's taken, that's the second time they've ran that play, and with good success, he needed 10 yards, he got 12, and it'll be first down for Lockhart from the Medina Valley 34-yard line. Bippert on the stop for Medina Valley, but not before they convert on the third and 10. That was Daytron Ellison. I wonder if they're brothers, Daytron and Daquan. I bet, I bet they are. They both have good speed, yeah, I can tell you one's that. A, one's a senior and one's a junior. As the Lions come right back to the line of scrimmage, this time in an eye formation. Takes a snap, hands the ball off right up the left side, and it's going to be a pickup of five yards. It'll bring up second down and five. That was number 24, Jesus Aldana on the carry. Grofin Snyder on the stop there for Medina Valley. But a good gain on first down, Jared. Panthers had him where they wanted the previous downs. They had him third down and ten and just could not stop him. Yeah, and it's going to be, uh, the ball's going to be placed at the Medina Valley 29-yard line. It'll be second down and five upcoming here for Lockhart. They come right back to the line of scrimmage. They're going to hand the ball off to Ellison over the right side. He's going to get met and brought down after a gain of maybe a yard. It's going to bring up third down and three. That's Ferguson and Santos once again for the Panthers. Daquan Ellison, the ball carrier once again, and we see why he's uh, one of the top rushers in the area. Um, he does have some speed, and, and they do run him a lot. But one of the things that Lockhart has here is if you look at their roster here, a lot of senior running backs, so some leadership back there and guys who are used to running the football. And that's a plus when you run this type of misdirection offense. On third down and three, they're going to pitch the ball out to the junior Ellison this time, and he's run out of bounds. I don't think he got the oh, no. flag. Flag just came in on the Lockhart sideline after the play, and I hope that's not a late hit. I think they're going to say he rode him out of bounds a little bit too long, but that's just being aggressive. That That's a play. you you got to keep your flag in your pocket on something like that. Yeah, absolutely. It's not like he hit him out of bounds. He was running him out of bounds as he was pushing him, and he just pushed him out. And they're going to get personal foul against Medina Valley. So they had him stopped. It was going to be fourth down and two. Instead, it's going to be first down. And just to describe that play, Santos ran him out of bounds, and both players were, were fighting for yards. position yep. on the field yards. And Santos just 
gra just got him out of bounds right on the white part of the field, the three the three yard white strip, and you got Jerry. You cannot call. No, that. that's that's not something. That, there's no danger there to no. anybody. I mean, that's just two players fighting hard for yardage. Lockhart right back to the line of scrimmage. Ball at the 17 yard line. They run the ball right side with Ellison. There are flags down on the play. I think that's going to be an offside against Medina Valley, but we'll see. I saw one of the Medina Valley defensive tackles jumping a little bit into the neutral zone. Didn't make contact. That's why they allowed the play to, to continue. So it's going to be a decision the whether, whether they want to take the play or take the penalty. And they did call whole, uh, offsides against Medina Valley. The result in the play was five yards, so it would have been second and five if they re refuse it. So they're going to take it and make it first and five. Yep, and the ball will move down to the Medina Valley 13-yard line. It'll be first and five. 6.47 to go here in the first quarter. So Lockhart's eaten nearly half of this quarter up with their offense so far as they come right back to the line of scrimmage out of the eye. Hand the ball off. Ellison tries the left tackle. And he's going to get maybe a yard, maybe two, before he's brought down. He gets down to the 10-yard line. It's going to bring up second down and about three for, for Lockhart. 44 Santos on the stop there along with number 21, Dylan Fillinger. And need to get down to the 8-yard line for a first down. The ball's on the 10. It's second down and two coming up here for the Lions. As Lockhart will... Come right back to the line of scrimmage here. They'll send a wide receiver out to the left side. That's number eight, Devin Clark. Takes the handoff as Ellison trying to get outside, and he is yanked and dropped. They threw a penalty there at the end. I don't think he had him by the face mask. He had him by the jersey. They may call a horse collar there. Santos took him to the ground, but that liable to be, a, and that's I think is what he's motioning. Yeah, but he had him by he, the he had the him by sleeve. the shoulder pad. Yeah. He didn't have him by the collar. Well, he didn't even have him by the pad. He had him by the jersey. And by the sleeve. Him. Yeah. Now they're going to move Lockhart back here. It looks like. So it has to be a holding penalty. It was a ten yard infraction. Yeah, I didn't see the referee make his his call over here since we're on the visitor side he's given all his calls to the opposite side well, of the field i was watching through the binoculars and before santos broke free of his engagement there with the offensive man the offensive guy had a lot of jersey so second and 13 and they're going to pitch it out ellison coming here to the near side he's got the corner turns up field inside the 10 he's going to be close to a first down we're we're in Modulin on the stop there for the Panthers. So Medina Valley so far defensively having a hard time containing Lockhart. They're, they're doing a good job up the middle, but they're managing to get the corners at the moment. It's going to bring up third down and a yard here for the Lions. The ball spotted at the Medina Valley 9. He's got to get to the 8 for a first down. 5.38 to go here in the first quarter. As the Lions just getting the play in. Ten seconds on the play clock. As they're going to have to get to the line of scrimmage here in a hurry and snap it as the play clock's down to four. Snaps the football, hands it off Ellison. He's going to try to get to the outside corner of the end zone, and he's hit into the end zone for a touchdown. So Lockhart scores first, a nine-yard touchdown run by Daquan Ellison, and Lockhart leads six to nothing. Tanner Bipper tried to force him out of bounds, but number 21 just outran the Panthers to the pylon and just got across for the touchdown. Yeah, and, and, you know, they talked in that coach's show, the defensive ends, about having to contain, and right now they're not being able to contain the outside, and that's where Lockhart's beating Medina Valley at the moment. This is Alfredo Jameis on to try to tack on the extra point. A good snap. The kick is up, and it is no good wide to the left. And so your score with 5.30 to go in the first quarter, Lockhart 6, Medina Valley nothing. We'll take a quick break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football brought to you by North Park Chevrolet. And hold on, I think we're going to, we're going to stay here a moment. I think there was a penalty against Medina Valley, so they're going to have to redo the try. What was they called? It looked like a legal substitution on Medina Valley, but I didn't see the Panthers. I didn't see anyone come in here late. No, I didn't either. But they're going to get a retry on this point after. So Jameis will get a, another shot here to try to make it 7 to nothing. And 
And so they'll tee the ball up again. Ball moves down to the one. It'll be teed up from the nine now instead of the ten. He's a yard closer. High snap. Gets the hold down. The kick is up, and this time he drills it straight through. So another flag. They just threw in another flag right where the ki right where the holder was. Yep, they sure did. So we'll stay here for a second to see what they call. Everyone's going off the field here. Well, it was after it went through. Yep, so... Um, your score with 5.30 to go first quarter is Lockhart 7, Medina Valley nothing. They got him for roughing the kicker. They are running into the kicker. They decline it. The extra point's good. So we'll take a quick break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football, and we'll continue in a moment. Visit MVBN.net for great articles on all your favorite coaches, players, and more at MVBN.net, the official website of the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. When you put money in our bank, you started a chain reaction. We made an auto loan. A local car dealer sold a car. A car salesman got a commission. His wife bought groceries. The checker at the supermarket got a paycheck. You made that happen. Thanks. Come home to Castroville State Bank. Member FDIC. Visit us online at castrovillestatebank.com. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. We're back here in Lockhart as Medina Valley getting set to get the ball for the first time. Lockhart took the ball and scored. There's five and a half minutes left here in the first or in the first quarter of play. As number 45 for Lockhart ready to kick it away. Puts his foot into it. A high end over end kick that's going to be taken by the Panthers at the 10 yard line. Starts up field. Gets up to the 25 and he's brought down. That was Tanner Bippert on the return. It'll be first and 10 Panthers from their own 25 yard line. Five tackle number five. That was Alex Thompson on the stop there for the Lockhart line. So let's see if the Panthers can duplicate what Lockhart did on their opening drive and get some points. That's right. And. We'll see the Panther offense for the first time here tonight. Alec Child comes out at quarterback for Medina Valley. We'll see Gibson on the field along with Logan Masters also to start things off here for the Panthers. Medina Valley will start with two wide receivers out here to the right. The Panthers move left to right. Child under center. Nobody in motion. Takes the snap. Hands it off. Gibson left side. Hold a run through and he's brought down across the 30 to about the 32, 33 yard line. A nine yard gain on first down. It'll bring up second and one. That was number five again on the stop there for the Lions. Alex Thompson but a good hard run there by James Gibson for the Panthers. Yep. Ball spotted at the 33. It's second down and two. He needs to get to the 35 for a first down. Panthers will send Leggett wide out to the right side. Gibson and Masters, the down backs for Medina Valley. They'll hand it off to, to the left side, number 25, Jacob Salas on the carry. He's got the first down. He gets up to the 40-yard line. It'll be first and 10 Panthers. Number five once again, Thompson on the stop. But when your safety's making the stops, that's pretty good for your offense. Yeah, it's just a little trap play that they ran to the left side, and Salas able to find some running room and pick up the first down for the Panthers. So first and 10 for Medina Valley. As the, the Panthers will come back to the line of scrimmage here. They'll send no wide receivers this time. Child under center. Gibson the, the back straight behind him. In that slot T formation. They're going to hand the ball off to, to Master. The ball came loose, but at the end of the play. He was I, down. It, yeah, he was down. Was that Gibson on the That carry? was Gibson in number five once again on the stop. Yep. That's five, four tackles in a row. By Thompson, and like I said, Jared, that's not good when your safety's making the stops, nope. especially when it's eight yards downfield. You have another eight-yard gain for Gibson. It's going to bring up second down and two. The ball's at the 48-yard line of Medina Valley. Panthers right back to the line of scrimmage. Two wingbacks here for the Panthers. They'll send a man in motion. Child rolling out to the right, looking to throw. Throws on the run, complete number 80 across the 40, down to the 35, and he's brought down. That's Aaron Sotelo on the... Reception for the Panthers, a good pass and gain, uh, catch on the play, and it's first down Medina Valley in the Lockhart side of the field. Caleb Jennings and Eddie Tukar on the stop, but a good throw and a good catch by number 80, Sotelo. 
It's going to be first and 10 Medina Valley from the Lockhart 34-yard line. Child under center. Gibson straight behind him in the formation. No wide receivers here for the Panthers. They're going to hand the ball off. Masters right side. He's got some room to run across the 25. Cuts it back to the far side of the field. Still on his feet, and he's brought down around the 22-yard line. It's going to be a first down for Medina Valley. A pickup of 12 yards for Masters on his first touch of the ball game. Adam Romero on the stop there for the Lions, but on the previous play, Aaron Sotelo just ran a little crossing route, a 10-yard crossing route. He started from the left side of the formation, came back to the right, and that's the side they rolled Alec Child out to a good throw and a good catch. Panthers right back to the line of scrimmage. Child under center takes the snap. Going to throw on the run high, but it's caught by Solace on the left side, and he's run out of bounds inside the 15 and around the 13-yard line. It's going to be close to a first down here, and I think they're going to... No, they're going to give him the first down as the referee says move the chains. Ten-yard pickup, first down Medina Valley. Number 11, Romero on the coverage for the Lions, but the Panthers looking to answer the opening drive for the Lions. One wide out to the right, Ryan McCauley for Medina Valley. Child takes the snap, hands the ball to Gibson up the middle. A lot of room to run to the end zone. Touchdown, Medina Valley. A 12-yard touchdown run for Gibson, and Medina Valley answers right back with 2.24 to play, and Grove will come on to try to tack on the extra point and tie up this ball game. Just a basic handoff right off the strong side. Gibson goes through the initial line, and nobody in the secondary looked like they wanted to get in front of him. No. Jared, with that head of steam, they kind of ported like the Red Sea. Medina Valley going with that swinging gate here on the extra point. They come set. Marsh, the holder. Grof will be kicking for the Panthers. Right-footed kicker for Medina Valley. The snap is back. The kick is up. And it is good. So with 2.24 to play in the first quarter, your score, Medina Valley 7, Lockhart 7. You're listening to Panther Football brought to you by North Park Chevrolet. And we will continue in just a moment. This is MVBN. The Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Every team knows that the two-point play can be a winning move. That's why State Farm agent Hazel Russell and her team are here to help you go for two by combining your home and auto insurance. It's a great call that saves you time and money. So go for the win and score savings by combining your home and auto. It's just another way we're here to help life go right. Call State Farm agent Hazel Russell at 830-931-3441 today. Or stop by her office at 1103 Highway 90 West in Castroville. You're watching Medina Valley Football. <laughs> This is the Medina Valley Sports Network. Welcome back to Lions Stadium here in Lockhart. Medina Valley, after a 12-yard Gibson run, makes it 7-7 with 2.24 to play here in the first quarter. Grove ready to kick it away, and the kickoff brought to you by Royce Grove Oil and Exxon Stations. And Grove puts his leg into it, a high end over end kick that's going to be taken at the 15 yard line. Starts up to the 20, cuts to the near side and runs into his own man. Didn't even get a 10 yard return on it. That was number 24 on the return, Jesus Aldana. And it'll be first and 10 Lockhart from their own 23 yard line. Isaac Santos on the stop there for the Panthers on the special teams. And so we'll see if the Medina Valley defense has made any adjustments here. We talked about Lockhart was able to get to the ends here against Medina Valley, and that's kind of where they beat them on that last drive. And we'll see if the Panthers can do a little better job of containing um, Ellison. 2.18 to go, first quarter. And Lockhart yet to get to the line of scrimmage. They come out and huddle. And as I mentioned, they'll send the center to the line of scrimmage, and then the entire team runs up. They're set for a second. They snap the ball, hand it to the right side to Ellison, the junior, and he's going to get a couple of yards, gets up to the 25-yard line. It's going to bring up second down and eight. It was number 44, Santos, once again on the stop for the Panthers. That time, Santos didn't allow Ellison to get to the outside. And so Lockhart... We'll get ready for second down and eight. And that's that's what Medina Valley's got to do. You've got to keep them in some second and third and long situations. 
to the line of scrimmage. No wide receivers. They're going to pitch the ball to Ellison coming to the near side, and the Panthers do a better job of sealing off that side. He only gets a couple of yards. It's going to bring up third down and five. Fillinger and Grove on the stop there for the Panthers. And as you mentioned, Jerry, number 21 couldn't get to the corner that time. No. And the opposite way the time before with his brother the opposite way. So I would we'll, assume they're brothers. Yeah, I, I, I think they are. I think they are. So it's going to be third down and six upcoming here for the Lions. The ball is spotted at the Medina Valley 33 or 27 yard line. As Lockhart right back to the line of scrimmage for third and six. They're going to hand the ball off on a trap play up the middle, and he stayed on his feet after spinning, and he's going to pick up the first down because of the extra effort. He was tripped up by Grant Snyder, but did that little cherry-picking move where he kept his knee from hitting the ground and got the yardage just needed for the first down. That was Daytron Ellison, and he needed six yards. He got seven. Ball moves up to the 34-yard line of Lockhart, and it'll be first and ten from there. Minute eight to go, first quarter and ticking as Lockhart comes right back up quickly to the line of scrimmage. Takes the snap, hands the ball off. Ellison trying to get to the outside. He's not going to be able to do it. Maybe got a yard on the play. A good job that time by the Panthers. They're not letting him get, get that outside that time. That was Daquan Ellison again on the carry. Pickup of two. It's second and eight. We are and Santos on the stop for the Panthers. So second and eight upcoming here for Lockhart. This will most likely be the last play of the first quarter here. And Mari and I talked about it on the way up here that this would probably be a very quick game with the way that these two teams run the football. Lockhart back to the line of scrimmage on second and eight. They're going to hand the ball right up the middle, and he's got some room to run, and he, he got hit, stumbled forward, gets across the 50 to about the Medina Valley 47-yard line, and it's going to be first down for Lockhart. And he was hobbling getting up. That was Daquan Ellison on the carry as he gets back toward the huddle. But that is going to be the last play of the first quarter. Snyder was on the stop there along with Cole Modulin for the Panthers. And your score after one quarter of play is Lockhart 7, Medina Valley 7. We'll take a break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football brought to you by North Park Chevrolet. And we will continue in just a moment. Medina Valley Pediatrics is the only pediatric clinic in Medina Valley for kids from birth to 21. From sick to well care, ADHD treatment, sports physicals and immunizations, same day appointments and 24 hours a day by phone for after hours emergencies. Most major commercial insurances and Medicaid accepted. Medina Valley Pediatrics, 1028 Country Lane in Castroville. Call 830-355-2732. MV-Pediatrics.com. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. We're back here at Lions Stadium. As we get ready for the second quarter, we'll flip things around here. Uh, Medina Valley will now be moving right to left. Lockhart will have it first down and 10 from the Panther 47-yard line. I'd like to congratulate the Medina Valley girls volleyball team on their win tonight. They won three, game, three sets to none, and so they keep going. I think they're, what, 7-1 and one now in district play. So congratulations to Coach Griggs and the team on the win. As Lockhart back to the line, they're going to hand the ball off up the middle this time. That's going to be number 24, Jesus Aldana on the carry. A pickup of four yards. It'll bring up second and six. Dawson Grove on the stop for the Panthers. That time they just ran right between the tackles. Pickup of four yards. Gets it down to the Medina Valley 42-yard line. As Lockhart takes their time, now they'll come right back up to the line of scrimmage. Aldonia, the deep back, they hand the ball off to Ellison, trying the right side. And he's going to have a first down. He needed six yards, and he got seven. That was Datron Ellison on the carry. First down, Lockhart. Ferguson and Modlin on the stop. But, man, he hits that hole quick. He does, and he's down to the 34-yard line of Medina Valley. I think what's happened now is Medina Valley is so focused on keeping them contained that they're letting them get up the middle now on them. Because most of the damage done here on this drive has been between the tackles. 
right back to the line of scrimmage. Takes the snap. They're going to hand the ball off. Aldano the right side. He's going to have some room to run. Gets inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. A pickup of five yards. It'll bring up second down and five. Dante Henry and Cole Modulin on the stop for the Panthers. Medina Valley has yet to stop them on defense as Lockhart on their second drive of the game looking to take it all the way downfield again. Second down and four upcoming here for the Lions as they spotted it down to the 28-yard line instead of the 29. Right back to the line of scrimmage. Takes the snap, hands the ball off. And uh, I think the ball was fumbled there, but uh, Ellison fell right on top of it. But it's going to be a loss of about three yards. It's going to bring up third and seven. Fillinger made sure that the only option that they had was for number three to jump on that loose ball. And it looked like the quarterback just did get it in his belly in time. And now the Panthers need to stiffen up here. Well, yeah, I think this is four down territory for Lockhart. The ball's at the Panther 32-yard line. It's going to be third down and seven here for Lockhart. Under center, takes a snap, rolling out, looking to throw, sets his feet, fires downfield, and it's going to be picked off, I believe, by Medina Valley. That was Modulin. Let's see if he stayed in bounds. They're going to say no. I think they're going to say it's an incomplete pass. Modulin came over and made the play, but I guess his foot came down out of bounds. It's going to bring up fourth down and eight. Good defensive play there. First pass play in the Panthers secondary stayed at home, Jared. Yep. That's and discipline really right there. He did, and, and, you know, Moduling was over the top. He undercut that route and made the play. Unfortunately, he couldn't keep his feet down in bounds, but the Panthers with a chance to get off the field here on fourth and eight, and Lockhart going to go for it. Out of the eye formation, takes the snap, heads Bubble. off, balls on the ground. Whether Medina Valley recovered or not, it's going to be Panther football. I think they never signaled one way or the other who actually recovered the ball. I think Medina Valley and Lockhart recovered it, but it's a turnover on downs, and Medina Valley's going to get it at their own 30-yard line, Jared, first and 10. That was the exact same play. They fumbled two plays earlier. The same handoff exchange from the quarterback to number three. Both times that ball hit the ground. Both times it looked like the quarterback wanted to pull it away from the running back and run the RPO, the read pass option, and the Running back just took it away from him. Yeah, and I think there is a timeout here on the field. Lightning, are you serious? Oh, are they going to give us a lightning delay? You've got to be kidding me. Oh, my. So we're going to have a lightning delay here, unfortunately, with 9.26 to go in the second quarter. It will be Medina Valley football whenever we come back, but I believe this is supposed to be a 30-second break. It's a, the 30 minute, 30 I believe. minute for sure. I'm going to pull up the radar here and see what it looks and like. And I had just said they don't look like any lightning clouds or anything. No, I never saw anything. Well, it might be behind us, what we can't see. That's the problem. But let me look at the radar here. And there is some, there is some stuff around. Nothing here. It's all green on the radar. Unfortunately, you know, wherever it's at, I don't know what the, what it is. It can't be within so many miles, I guess. But unfortunately, we're going to have a lightning delay here. And, Mari, what did y'all do last time y'all had a lightning delay? We just, we just went off the air and said we'd come back in about 25, 30 minutes and because that's what it's going to take, and yep. that's what we had to do. And, unfortunately, I think that's what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and take, take the break, and we will come back whenever we resume. We thank you for listening here and, and staying with us here, but we will be back on the air as soon as we know what's going on. But it is a lightning delay, and I think we just saw some of the flash lightning here. Hopefully this just moves on, and it only lasts about 30 minutes. But uh, we'll come back. Your score right now in the second quarter with 9.26 to go is Medina Valley 7, Lockhart 7. It will be Panther ball first and 10 from their own 30 when we come back. But you're listening to Panther football on the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Brought to you by North Park Chevrolet, and we'll continue in a few minutes.
<clears throat> I'd like to welcome everybody back here to Lion Stadium in Lockhart. Um, we've had a nice lightning delay here, but the teams are back out on the field. They're warming up right now, and we're, we're getting ready to play more here. I know there's some more storms coming, but hopefully we can get most of this game in before before that gets here. Or hopefully there's no lightning in it. We'll play in the rain, but they can't play with the lightning around. Um, there's Just to reset everything for you, we're at 9.26 to play in the first half. The score is 7-7. Seven to seven. Lockhart scored on their opening drive. Medina Valley came back with a 12-yard run by Gibson uh, to tie up the ball game. And Medina Valley is going to have the ball first and 10 at their own 30 to start here when we resume play. They stopped Lockhart on a fourth and eight. Uh, Lockhart fumbled it, recovered their own fumble, but because of the fourth down, there was a turnover on downs, and Medina Valley is going to get the ball with a chance to drive downfield and take the lead. But what's really going to be the tell here is going to be how is this going to affect the teams coming out of the locker room after this hour, I don't know, what was it, an hour and a half delay? Well, it it's nothing new to Medina Valley because no. we've seen this before two weeks ago when Medina Valley played uh, the Bernie Greyhounds, it was nearly a two-hour delay. We didn't get started. Actually, we didn't get started till 10.02, and it's 10.04 right now. Yep. So it's actually a little bit longer of, de of a delay uh, this evening here, but Panthers are out there doing their calisthenics, warming up. Uh, so is the Lockhart Lions. And, Jared, barring any more electricity in the air, we're going to try to complete this, this game, the only other option that, I've heard that remains is everybody is open after next week's district game. The whole district is open. So that would be the only scenario if this game would not finish. If we do have to delay another bit of time due to lightning that uh, it can always be redone in the bye week, which is two weeks from now. But I'm like you, Jared. I don't want to make this trip again. We're here. Let's see if we can get it done and you know, advantage to the Panthers so far. As you mentioned, both teams scored in their opening possession. Medina Valley held the Lockhart Lions to turn over on downs at the 30, so that's where the Panthers will scrimmage uh, when this second quarter begins. And both teams took their opening possession and scored. Medina Valley scored a little bit easier than Lockhart. Lockhart had to face a couple of third down situations where Medina Valley faced one, but they made a first downs on first down three times, so that limited the plays. But regardless, you know, it's – you just got to wait and see how both teams are going to react to this little, you know, this yeah. two-hour delay. Well, that – and you know we're not really going to have a halftime. It's, uh, it was six minutes when it was at Bur – when Bernie played at Medina Valley. So I'm sure that there's not going to be a long halftime here because uh, as far as I'm told, this game has to end by midnight. Yes. It's, it, when it gets to midnight, they cannot Drop play dead. into tomorrow. Yes. And from what I understand, the, the choices are is you either take the score as it is with whatever time's left, and that's the final, or you can come back and complete it later on. Um, so hopefully we can get this ball game in here before any more weather comes. Um, it's still a little drizzly outside. People do have their umbrellas up, but for the most part, they're sitting without them. Um, been a long delay, but fortunately, we're, we're about to get ready to get this game rolling again. Um, as we talked about, uh, Lockhart came out. They drove downfield and scored. They took six and a half minutes off the clock in their drive. Uh, Medina Valley had the ball for about three and a half minutes after that and, and managed to put one in the end zone. What we've seen so far, on the opening drive, Lockhart was able to get to the edges. Their second possession, Medina Valley kind of contained them. They managed to get up the middle a little bit, but in the end, Medina Valley forced them to turn the ball over. From the Panthers, what we've seen is they're able to throw the ball. They've thrown it twice. Alec is two for two well, with a couple of pretty good gains. I think he's picked up 30-something yards on his two completions. Lockhart's only throw of the game was nearly picked off by Modling on the sideline. He just was out of bounds when he caught it. I think that if Medina Valley can get ahead by a couple of scores here, Lockhart's going to have a very, very difficult time getting back into it because they're not a quick strike offense. And, and I think that if the Panthers can get down the field here and score on this opening drive, that's really going to put some pressure on the Lockhart offense. Yeah, the Panthers, you know, their main concern is they need to take care of the Ellison brothers, Daytron and Daquan, because 
I, I, we're just assuming they are brothers. They have the same last name, and they're one of them's a senior, and one of them is a a uh, sophomore. So, and and they're lightning fast. Yeah, and as, they a, are. as you mentioned, Jared, we we contain them the second possession and force them to go inside. And Medina Valley got the ball over on downs, and that's where we'll start this second quarter with 9:26 to go. And as you mentioned, if Medina Valley would get a couple of scores up, they'd have the you know they'd have the upper hand because they are going to get the ball to start the second half. Yep. But I, it it could come down to who has the ball last, and who's going to win the ball game. Yeah, that's absolutely true because. And the thing is now is you're going to have a wet field. Even if it's not raining, you're going to have a wet field and a wet ball to, to deal with. And both of these teams are running teams. But we saw Lockhart put the football on the ground twice before the rain started in that last drive that they had. And so we'll have to see how that plays out as this game goes on. But uh, Medina Valley looks like they're ready to get going. Lockhart's headed over to the sidelines. And uh, we're about ready to get this ball game started. It's going to be first down and 10 for the Panthers when they come out here on the field. And uh, we'll see how how they come out here after this long delay. There's 9.26 to go here in the first half. 7-7 seven to seven is your score. This is the opening game of district for both of these teams. Unfortunate that you have the delay, but here's the thing. You both have to play through it. Both teams have to deal with the weather. And it's just going to be, you know, who who sucks it up and says, hey, it's not going to affect us. Well, and just to go around the district a little bit, from we've heard the Avaldi game was called off. Was it? Uh, they they called it off. So, And the other score of interest that we were talking about was the Bernie champion, Kerrville Tyvee. And Bernie champion has just taken the lead on Bernie champion. I mean, uh, Bernie champion has just taken the lead on Kerrville Tyvee. 20 to 17. Yep, and I can get way through the third quarter. I want to pull those scores up here real quick before. Well, they're taking the field here and ready to go. Um, as Mari mentioned, Tyvee's ahead of champion 30 to 27 with 8.24 to go in the fourth Tyvee quarter. Tyvee retook the lead. Yep. Oh, wow. As the offense getting set to come back out, uh, the Uvalde game, yeah, they have not resumed it. Uvalde's ahead 28 to nothing at halftime, but they. That game's been at halftime for a while. And the the other game is Alamo Heights, which I think they were beating Kennedy pretty good. Well, I, that Uvalde game, Jared, that was from last week, wasn't it? Because it's district playing and... They were playing Memorial. Oh, I thought it said they were playing uh, Eagle Pass win. Oh. Uh, yeah, the Alamo Heights score is... That's next week. Oh, okay. But we're ready to get going here. Medina Valley's going to come to the line of scrimmage here. Child under center for the first play. They hand it off to Gibbs, uh, Masters, and he fumbles the ball. It goes out of bounds. That was not a very safe play. It's going to go out of bounds for no gain. It'll be second down and 10 as they were coming to the near sideline here, and the ball just popped out of there. But like I said, they're going to have to contend with a wet ball now. Alex Thompson... They're putting the pressure on Masters as he tried to cut to the outside. Thompson cut the lane off for him, and Logan fumbled it, but it was out of bounds. So it's going to be second down and nine. They actually give him a gain of a yard on the play. Medina Valley comes out in the slot tee. No wide receivers. Gibbs in the back behind Child. The center man in motion. They're going to hand the ball off to Gibson up the middle, who's going to fight for yards across the 35 to the 37-yard line. It's going to bring up third down and about three for the Panthers. Lewis Torres, number 55 and number 44. Eric Tukar on the stop there for the Lockhart Lions. Two of the active linebackers in there for the Lions tonight. So third down and a long three upcoming here for Medina Valley. Ball at the Panther 38-yard line. It's third down. They'll send a wide receiver to each side of the formation. Child under center. Gibson is loaned back. They'll send a man in motion, Solace. They hand it to Gibson up the middle, and he's going to bull his way forward for a first down, a pickup of seven yards down to the up to the 45-yard line. It'll be first and ten Panthers. Number 72, Isaiah Zapparippa on the stop there for the Lockhart Lions, but good hard running there by James Gibson. Stretches to change, Jared. Big first down. Yeah, absolutely. Getting that first first down on that drive, especially after that early fumble, puts you in second down and long. We'll come out here in that slot set. 
Gibson the down back behind Child. Takes the snap. Hands the ball. Oh, Child's going to keep it himself trying to get outside, and he's going to be ripped down for a loss back around the 42-yard line. Loss of two. It'll bring up second and 12. Two car on the stop there for the Lions. That's the first time we've seen Medina Valley try that with the keeper trying to get to the outside, and Lockhart did a good job there of not letting him get outside of the containment. So second and 12 upcoming for the Panthers. Ball back to the Medina Valley 43-yard line. Medina Valley will come out here in the shotgun. They'll send two wide out to the right. One to the left side here. Child takes the snap, rolling out to the right side. Throws on the run. Low, did he catch it? We'll see the referee hasn't really given a signal over there. I think they're going to say incomplete. Pass is intended for number 80, Aaron Sotelo, and just underthrown there. Yep. Sotelo had a spot there open on the sidelines, but the throw just didn't get there. So it's going to bring up third down and 12. And as Mari said, it was a low throw. Sotelo went down to try to catch it, but I think he trapped it against the turf. So on third down, the Panthers will come out in the shotgun again. Same formation. Medina Valley moving right to left. Now they send four wide. They'll send man in motion. And we're going to get a stoppage here. False start against Medina Valley. And so that'll move them back five more yards here. And it's going to bring up third down and 17. So Medina Valley, after that first down, they went backwards here. The ball's moved back to the 37-yard line. Or make that the 38-yard line of Medina Valley. Panthers need to get all the way out to the Lion 45. They'll send a man in motion again out of the shotgun child. Takes a snap. Looking to throw. They set up a screen to Gibson. Makes the catch. Tried to make the first man miss. And he had a lot of room if he could have made him. But just got up end it. Number 22, George Renteria made the tackle, and if they get the block on him, that's a room. first down. They had room, and what happened is he split the two blockers and just got G Gibson tied up on his feet. Gibson went down. They had the right play call. They just didn't execute. Yeah, and that he only picked up four yards. It'll be fourth down and 13, and child out there to punt the ball away. Lockhart's return men standing back around their own 28-yard line. Child takes the snap, gets the punt away, a high kick that's going to take a bounce and be down by the Panthers at the Lockhart 35-yard line. And that's where the Lions will start first and 10. 6.15 to play here in the first half. 7-7 seven, seven your score, and Lockhart with the football first and 10 from their own 35-yard line. That ball was down by number 63, Zach Hecker for the Panthers. And so the Lion offense will come out for the third time in the ball game. And they come with that. You know, they take their time. Their center runs up there. They come quick to the line of scrimmage. Out of a power eye formation, they're going to hand the ball off this time to Ellison. And he's brought down for a gain of only a yard, it looks like. It'll be second and nine. Santos and Perry on the stop there for Medina Valley. That was Daytron Ellison, number three. He's a junior. His brother's a senior who runs the ball also. I know that can get pretty confusing. you got two Ellisons that run the football. Second and nine upcoming here for the Lions. Lockhart comes up to the line of scrimmage out of the eye formation. They're going to pitch it to... Alato going to the left side, and he's going to be hit by number 21 and dropped for a gain of a yard. Dylan Fillinger on the stop, along with number 28, Grant Snyder. Two good defensive plays here for the Panthers to start this third offensive possession for the Lockhart Lions. That was Aldonia on the carry. It's third down and eight now facing Lockhart, and that's what you want if you're Medina Valley is to put them in some third and long situations. We'll see if the Panther defense can get off the field here. Ball's at the Lockhart 37-yard line as they come to the line of scrimmage. Send a man in motion. They're going to pitch it way out to the left here to Ellison, trying to cut it up field. And Medina Valley's going to stop him at the 40, a pickup of three yards, but it's going to be fourth and five. Taylor Weir and Santos along with Baylor Bippert on the stop. 
And they just they try to pitch. They got a couple of lead blockers out in front, but Medina Valley did a good job to stretch that play to the sideline, forced him back inside, and Weir was able to come up and make the tackle. So Lockhart's going to be forced to punt for the first time in the ball game. 4.30 and counting to go in the first half. Lockhart's punter is Daytron Ellison, number three. You got to be careful. Yeah, absolutely. He is the running back. Yep. Medina Valley with Modeling and Bippert back deep to receive the punt. Ellison will kick it away. A line drive kick that's going to be fielded by Bippert at the 30, up to the 35 40, and about an 11 yard return. So Medina Valley is going to have it first and 10 from their own 41 or 42 yard line, depending on the spots. A decent field position for the Panthers. Eddie Tukar on the stop there for the Lockhart Lions. But I like what I saw right there. Bippert came up, caught it on the air, got positive yards, got eight yards on the return instead of sitting back there yep. and waiting, got positive yards. Yeah, and sometimes you see those return men just let it go over their head instead of fielding it and, and keeping the yard. We've seen that too many times. So the Panthers will come straight out to the line of scrimmage. Child under center for Medina Valley. That tight slot formation for them. No wide receivers here for Medina Valley. Child takes the snap. They're going to hand it to... Salado going to the right side. He's across midfield and down to about the 46-yard line, a pickup of 11, a first down for Medina Valley. Great run by Salas. He was brought down by number one in the secondary, Jaden Garza, but a good run by number 25, Salas. And, Jared, that's what the Panthers yep. needed there on plus side of the field right now. Yep, down to the Lockhart 45-yard line, first and 10 Medina Valley. As the Panthers come right back to the line of scrimmage. No wide receiver set again. Takes the snap. They're going to hand it to Gibson. Cuts it up field. Gets hit and taken down. He falls forward for a gain of two yards. It's going to bring up second down and eight. 74 on the stop there for the Lockhart Lions. That's Seth Smith. It, it, it didn't look like that was a clean no. exchange from the quarterback to, to the running back. No. It looked like he kind of bobbled it a little it bit. It looked like it took a little too long for it to develop. Medina Valley sends two wide receivers out this time, one to each side of the formation. They're going to hand the ball. Gibson up the middle with a lot of room to run. Gets down to around the 30-yard line. Another first down for the Panthers. Another 10-yard pickup. Alex Thompson on the stop, but not before Gibson hits the And that looked a lot yeah. crisper than, than the one on first down. Yeah, absolutely. And that's going to get Medina Valley down to the Lockhart 31-yard line. It'll be first and 10. 242 and counting to go here in the first half. Is that Gibson or is that Villafane? That, that looks like 46 well, in that, there now. That was Gibson on that last They're run. both in there, yeah, both the big bodies. Yeah, Villafane's playing over on that right slot right now. Child takes a snap. He's going to throw. Sets up, fires deep downfield. Goes up for it, bobbled and incomplete. That was number two, Ryan McCauley, the intended receiver. He was covered all the way, but he gave himself a chance, got his fingertips on it. Adam Romero on the coverage, and good coverage. McCauley actually went over the top for that, and, and I like to call it. You try to get catch him off guard, but he threw it in the coverage there. You're, you're pounding them up the middle, so that's not a bad play. You try to catch no. them sleeping on the outside. What I was confused about, they didn't try the play action. That, I there think, was a straight drop yeah, back. Yeah, was a straight yep. drop back. No wide receiver set this time. They'll hand the ball off to Solace, trying up the middle on that trap from the slot position. He's going to get about two yards here, and it's going to bring up third and eight. Got his feet taken out by number 35, the inside linebacker, Alex Sosa. Right as Solace hit the hole, Sosa cut the legs out from under a minimum gain of about two yards. Two minutes and counting to go here. Ball at the Lockhart 29-yard line. The Panthers come out in the shotgun. They'll send twins to each side. They'll send Solace in motion. Child rolling out right side, looking to throw. Fires on the run low, but did he make the catch? Nope. nope, incomplete on the far sideline. So it's going to bring up fourth down and eight here, and we'll see what the Panthers choose to do. I think you need to go for it here, Jared. Yeah, you've got to. This would be a 46-yard field goal attempt if they tried it. But I think Medina Valley is going to go for it here on fourth down. That was a good job by number 46, Villafane, picking up the – they had like a, a run blitz there, and the end was coming in. Villafane did a good job of keeping uh, pressure off of Alec Child. He just uh, – another occasion right, right there, Jared, where he just didn't get the ball to him. Yeah. That same formation. That was the same throw he tried earlier. Both times he's underthrown it. They'll come out here with five wide receivers, empty backfield. 
Child drops back to throw, steps up, fires over the middle, incomplete. It pass was intended for, I believe that's Gibson. He was in double coverage, and that's going to be a turnover on downs with a minute 37 to go. And Jared, he had, that was an ill-advised yeah. throw because he threw in a double coverage. When you have five wide receivers like that running routes and one man's doubled, somebody's going to be open somewhere. But, but, but he, he was just looking at yep. one guy in that pass. I think he had his mind made had, up. I before. think he had his mind made up before the play even was, was developing who he was going to throw to because he never looked off of number 45. And it'll be first and 10 Lockhart from their own 29-yard line. A minute 37 to go. I believe they have all three timeouts remaining still. Out of the eye. They're going to hand the ball off number 34 this time with some a little bit of room to run. Falls forward for a five-yard gain. That was, well, they don't have a 34 on their roster. He was dragged down by number 28, Grant Snyder. Second and five. Minute 15 to go. They're going to hand the ball off again. This time Ellison, and he's dragged down from behind. Pickup of two yards. It's going to bring up third down, and you got a late, late flag. Another tackle by Grant Snyder, and they're going to get him. I think they're going to call him for unsportsmanlike conduct because he kind of, after the tackle, he kind of rolled over and didn't let go of the running back's leg well, and, and kind of twisted it a little bit I more. But I didn't see anything bad. They do call personal foul against uh, Lockhart. No. Uh, no. Yep. Yeah. He, well, he it, pointed the wrong direction. No, they're marking it off against they? Lockhart. Well, then he kicked it. Snyder then yep. is what he did Cause because I saw him kick back and I thought he was because Grant grabbed a hold of him when he came down he, he, he followed through on the tackle and the well, Medina, running back kicked him. Well Medina Valley I think just took their first time out here with a minute six to go they want to save some clock here because this is going to be second down I think they want to see if they can get the ball back with some decent field position and just see what happens. Well and, and if, if Lockhart plays in the Medina Valley's hands they try a pass here which if I'm them I stick with the run and run yeah. as much, much off the clock as you can. But in the Valley, as you said, Jared, I think they do have their other two timeouts left. So Panthers may get the ball here with uh, some There's time a left. Bit of time left. This timeout is brought to you by Peerless Equipment, um, your South Texas irrigation experts. They specialize in sales and service of irrigation equipment uh, to the agricultural and wildlife industries. And we thank them for being a sponsor here. Again, this is this broadcast brought to you by North Park Chevrolet, and we thank all of our sponsors for making it possible to be on here. Uh, Medina Valley with two timeouts remaining now. It's going to bring up third down, and looks like 19 to go for Lockhart here. So if Medina Valley can get a stop here, take a timeout, they're going to get the ball back with just under a minute to go. But you got to stop them here first. The ball's back at the Lockhart 21-yard line. No wide receivers here. They're going to hand the ball straight up the middle, and he's going to get a few yards, but he's brought down right away, and Medina Valley is going to take a timeout with a minute one to go. And for the timeout, we'll take a quick break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football on the Medina Valley Broadcast Network, and we'll continue in just a moment. Follow us on Twitter at MV Broadnet. Tweet and retweet scores, schedules, and more. Tweet at MV Broadnet for MVBN. Nobody can design, create, or maintain your lawn better than 3D Landscaping and Irrigation. With over 17 years of experience, owner Ray Doyan and his crew take pride in their craftsmanship and service. They're fully insured, offer free estimates, and multiple references, so you know you're getting the best. 3D does landscaping, lawn maintenance, irrigation, tree installation, lighting, and more. Whether it's residential or commercial, 3D Landscaping and Irrigation has you covered. Give 3D a call at 830-985-9115 or find us online at threedlandscaping.com. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Back here at Lockhart, it's fourth down. And Ellison ready to punt it away. Medina Valley with Bippert and Moduling back standing at their own 48. Ellison's punt is away. A high spiral kick this time. Fair catch called by Bippert at the 47-yard line, and that's where Medina Valley will have it with 54 seconds to go. And the way they can throw the ball, they still have one timeout remaining. The clock will stop to move the chains on first down, so we'll see what the Panthers can do here with 54 seconds to go. With the timeout and the way that high school football is where it stops on a first down, you can use the middle of the field here, Jared. You don't necessarily have to go towards the sideline. Right. And so the Panthers will come out at their, from their own 47-yard line. They have 53 yards to go to the end zone. 
They'll come out in the shotgun. Gibson the lone back to the right of Child. Panthers send twins to each side of the formation as they move right to left. Child to throw. Quick hitter out to leg it. Makes the catch. Slips a tackle. Down the sidelines. He's pushed out of bounds around the 33-yard line. And that's a first down for Medina Valley. And the clock will stop as he went out of bounds. Pushed out of bounds by number eight, Devin Clark. And they actually thought Garrett was going to go out of bounds. And he stayed in and took a turn up the field. Got about 10 extra yards on that after the catch. Yeah, the ball spotted at the Panther or at the Lockhart 34-yard line. Medina Valley comes right back out in the shotgun. They'll send trips out to the right side of the formation this time. Out of the pistol. Takes the snap. Child rolling out right with some time. Sets up. Fires deep downfield to the end zone. Leg it goes up. Makes the catch. Touchdown, Medina Valley. A 34-yard touchdown catch in double coverage. Just went up and took that football away. And Medina Valley strikes quickly and leads 13-7. to When that ball was in the air, I thought, oh, my. Wow. He threw it in a double coverage. Number seven made that play yeah. happen. He, he bailed the quarterback out. Did they throw a flag? I don't know. If they did, that just took an outstanding catch away from number seven, Garrett Leggett. What, what's the call here? Because I didn't see a flag down on the field unless somebody said it was incomplete, but they're putting the ball back to the 34-yard line. Are they saying he didn't catch it when he went to the ground? Yep. Yeah, he didn't catch it through the... Uh, oh, what's a catch? Yeah. Come on. I mean, he had both hands around <laughs> the football above everybody and I mean he came down with it I never even saw the ball come out but nonetheless it's going to be second and 10 from the 34 Panthers out of the gun again 38 seconds to go child going to fire to McCulley complete over to the left side he goes out of bounds a pickup of about five yards it'll be third down and, and six pick up a four they try and Ellison on the coverage there but it got five yards so third down here for Medina Valley but Ball down to the Lockhart 29. He did get out of bounds, like yep. you mentioned. That was a good heads-up job. Still with one timeout remaining here for Medina Valley. That is unfortunate for Leggett. That was a heck of a play that, that a he made. a super attempt. Twins to each side here. Gibson the lone back. Child ready to throw. Pump fakes. Gets out of some trouble. Fires on the run and throws it away. Out of bounds. He did have a receiver in the area. And it's going to bring up fourth down and ten for Medina Valley. Or fourth and five for Medina Valley. Lockhart brought some pressure via number 66 there. Or 64. Actually, David Solero put some pressure on. And Alec did a good job of just getting rid of that ball. Yeah, he almost got sacked. Sack. Yeah, he almost got sacked. Somehow he got away and had the wits to throw it away here. 26 seconds to go. It's fourth down and five coming up here. You do have a timeout. Like you mentioned, it'll stop the clock on a first down. You can use the whole field. Twins to each side out of the gun. They'll send a man in motion. They're going to hand the ball off right side. Cuts it upfield. He's got some room. He's going to get close to a first down. He had to get to the 24. We'll see where he got to. It looks like they're going to spot him at the 25. And that's going to be a turnover on downs. And... No, they're trying to get to the line of scrimmage quickly here, and the referees are stopping play. It, it depends on the ball spot. Well, I think the Panthers didn't realize that the um, offense that they that didn't it was the fourth. Down. Well, that it was fourth down. Well, and here's the thing: if but he, they didn't make the call out there on the field. He tried to run east and west there at the end of that. If he turns it up field, he's probably got the first down. But it's going to be a turnover on downs with 19 seconds left, and Lockhart's going to get the ball here. That was Pardo on the run, and it looked like he had an opportunity. Yep. They just stopped him about a half a yard shy. Well, and it's first and 10 Lockhart from their own 25, and it looks like they're just going to take a knee here. And they will and just run out the end of the half. So your score at halftime is going to be Medina Valley 7, Lockhart 7. We will take a quick break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football brought to you by North Park Chevrolet, and we will continue in just a moment. MVBN, the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Sammy's Restaurant and Havy's Alsatian Bakery, two legendary landmarks in Castroville. From breakfast to delicious hometown lunch specials and more, Sammy's satisfies your taste buds with the unique flavor of Castroville. And from fresh baked breads to pies and pastries, South Texans have made Habe's Alsatian Bakery a must to visit since 1940. Sammy's Restaurant, online at sammysrestaurant.com. Habe's Alsatian Bakery, online. 
online at HadesBakery.com. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. We're back here at Lions Stadium, and it looks like they're going to give 15 minutes for the halftime here. Um, I'm kind of surprised that they're going to do that. But they do run the clock from 15 minutes down. Um, your score at halftime, Medina Valley 7, Lockhart 7. Uh, no scores after the break right there. Both teams, the Medina Valley was able to move the ball there, got turned away on fourth down uh, right at the end of the half there, and Lockhart just put a knee down, kind of regroup, and we'll start a full half of football here when we come back. Well, I think the pivotal play there for the Panthers on that last possession is when they pounded it out for a uh, leg, it turned it up and got the first down. And then the Panthers threw again on the next down and put them back behind the chain, second and ten. And, you know, you, you had momentum going. You had timeout stuff. You could use all of the field. And when they got behind down and distance, they just couldn't overcome that. They had a third down, a fourth down and what? Fourth and five. Fourth and five and got four yards on it. So And I, I want to point out that play that happened in the end zone there where Leggett went up and, and made the – attempt on the ball one of the referees did signal touchdown what I was told during the break is the other referee on the far side came over and said incomplete the ball hit the ground when he came down so he just didn't maintain the catch through the ground that's a rule that they put in recently is having to maintain it through the ground you can't just catch the football come down and let it pop out uh, I know there's a lot of people that don't agree with that well you know what is a catch at this point, but unfortunately, he couldn't hold on to it through the ground, and that's why there was the call of incomplete. There was a touchdown call on the field, and then the other referee came in and said no. And and you didn't get no really complaints out of the Medina Valley sidelines no. to, to, to argue the call, so evidently they saw the same thing or, or were pretty much convinced that the same thing happened on the field. You know, uh... Both teams, Jared, it looked like we were going to have a not a scoring fest, with, but more scoring that we had at halftime because both teams took their opening possession and run down the field easy yep. on the other. And since then, it's been turnover on downs and, what, three turnover on downs Couple and of one punt, punt two, two punts? punts one, each team punt at once, and then, uh, yeah, turnover on downs. So, you know, Medina Valley – their defense is looking real good. Their offense has looked good at times. What they need to do is now finish off those drives. Um, I know there at the end of the, the half, they kind of got out of what they normally do offensively, going to the shotgun with time running out, having to find you know some quick offense. I think when, when they come out in the second half and they'll be able to get the ball and have a full half to play, we'll see them run Medina Valley offense, You know that, the brand of football that they are able to play. Because they are going to get the ball to start the second half as they won the toss and deferred. So Medina Valley will get the ball to start the second half. Seven to seven, you know, is your score. And, and Jared, it, it was offense in the first two possessions, and it's been defense on the next six. Yep. And and we talked about that before the game, that these defenses see this kind of offense that it might end up being a defensive struggle toward the end of the football game here, especially after they make some adjustments and kind of see the speed of each team. Lockhart has speed also. Those two Ellison boys are, are pretty quick they can get to the outside and they can run it up the middle and they've they've got that they don't have that gibson ability to run over you but they can make you miss they have the ability to stop and move and, and make you miss tackles and we've seen that from them and then we've also seen gibson just run over some people but i think if medina valley can get back to what they do best running the football they'll be able to to put some points on the board no, i gotta agree and uh, i think we're going to go ahead and We'll, we'll take a break here in just a moment. Uh, we'll take a break here in just a few minutes as we're at halftime. The bands are not going to be performing here at halftime. Um, as, you know, with the weather and everything, not enough time to perform. They only give you a 15-minute halftime here uh, because of the long, long weather delay that we endured a while ago. And we're going to take a break real quick. You're listening to Panther Football on the Medina Valley Broadcast Network brought to you by North Park Chevrolet and we'll continue in just a moment. Look for the Medina Valley Broadcast Network on Facebook. 
like us, and you'll always get the latest on Panther sports and news from MVBN. Once you start banking online, it all just starts to click. You get e-statements, online bill pay, 24-7 access, your whole financial picture right on your screen. Plus, with our bank, you get the local support you need to make it all work. Get clicking with online banking today. Come home to Castroville State Bank. Member FDIC. Visit us online at CastrovilleStateBank.com. Weather in South Texas is unpredictable. That's why our neighbors in Medina Valley trust Four Winds Air Conditioning and Heating for residential and commercial service. Four Winds provides maintenance, repairs, equipment upgrades, and heat load calculations for new construction design and installation. Four Winds offers financing on anything over $300. Family owned and operated since 2006. Four Winds Heating and Air Conditioning. Call 210-892-2925 or on the web at number 4WindsACNHeat.com. Sometimes it seems like banks try to make things too complex. At Broadway Bank, they're removing the complications and offering services some other institutions won't, like the all-new Broadway Bank free checking. Open it on your mobile phone in as little as 90 seconds. It's fast, easy, digital, and free. Discover the all-new free checking and other ways they're innovating local banking by visiting Broadway Bank at 1006 North Fiorella Street or call 830-538-9023. Free checking subject to approval. Conditions and restrictions apply. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. We're back here at Lions Stadium at halftime. 7-7 seven to seven is your halftime score between Medina Valley and Lockhart in the opening game of district. And some scores from around the district. Kerrville Tyvee beat Bernie Champion tonight 30-27. to That was a good game down to the end. That game was at Champion. And that's who Medina Valley will have next week at Panther Stadium is Bernie Champion. Uvalde is ahead of Memorial 41 to nothing with about 12 minutes left in the 11 minutes left in the fourth quarter. And the other game going on tonight is Alamo Heights and Kennedy. That shouldn't be close either, I wouldn't think. No. Alamo Heights, let's see here. They beat Kennedy 41 to nothing was the final. Yeah. And this is the only other game going on in the district at the moment. Uh, game in San Antonio. I know Judson beat Steele. I think it was 54-21 to 21 was the final. So that was supposed to be a pretty good game. And, and Judson apparently pretty good. I think they're ranked number four in the state this year. But uh, those are just some of the scores around the area. I know Honda was getting beat at one point, 35 to nothing by Marion around halftime. And I'll, I'll pull that score up here and see what it was also, just some scores from the area. I think it ended up 50-something to 6. but 55 to 6 was the final. Honda getting beat by Marion at Berry Field. Yeah, 55-6 was the final there. Well, you don't see too many lopsided losses back-to-back -back at Berry Field. No. With the, with the Honda Owls, that's... that's uh, very unusual. Yeah, another score from the area. Brackettville beating DeHennis with two minutes to go in the fourth quarter. 40-26 to 26 is the score there. Wow. Bracket on top of them. And I know LaPrior put a good one on Sabinal. It was at one point 41 to about nothing. Ooh. So LaPrior might have a pretty good team this year. They've had some in the past. But uh, we still had about six minutes to go here before the second half starts. The rain's held off at the moment. It's... Coming down a little bit, I think, out there. There's a couple of um, umbrellas up, but a lot of a lot of Medina Valley fans sitting without them, so can't be too bad down there right now. And uh, as you mentioned, you know, we had the, the lightning delay, and, and the, the teams are, are running the ball, so we've had quick quarters. Yep. We've, we've got a quick halftime, and we, we hate to, you know, get off the air and not talk about it a little bit more, but as Jared mentioned, we owe our sponsors quite a yep. few quite a few spots because we haven't been able to take any so yeah and uh we'll take another break here in just a moment but i i want to take a chance here at halftime to recognize the sponsors um i'll just read through the list here because without them we wouldn't be able to bring you these games here live on the medina valley broadcast network and the sponsors are north park chevrolet uh, valley martin royce grove exxon's peerless equipment security state bank medina electric uh, double t outfitters Community National Bank, 3D Landscaping, MV Pediatrics, Sammy's Restaurant and Habe's Bakery, 
Casterville State Bank, Hazel Russell State Farm Agent, Four Winds AC and Heating, Broadway National Bank, Tondre Gwynn Funeral Home, and QRC Health Mart. And again, thank you to all of them for making it possible to bring you these games here on the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Uh, I know Mari and I enjoy doing these games. Um, also remember to tune in on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock to our our show that we have there. It's myself, Mari, Dwayne, and Jeff. And um, last week, or last Wednesday, we had Coach Eric Sosa on there talking, offensive coordinator for Medina Valley. And then in our community corner, we had Mr. Royce Grove on there talking about uh, Saint, the St. Saint Louis Comets and Med- Medina Valley and how that all formed when Casterville and Lacoste kind of, you know, and real Medina. Together. Yeah, and when they all, you know, conjoined and made Medina Valley. And that was pretty interesting. And then he talked also about how the Youth Baseball Association got started out in, in Casterville also. Uh, pretty interesting on there. And the week before, we had Superintendent Rohrbach on who, you know, had a lot of good things. And just tune in on Wednesday night. And, you know, we'll have, we'll have some more community corner and, and some players and coaches on for you also. You know, and here's a trivia question uh, for all you listeners out there. Uh I want to ask y'all if y'all remember who hit the first home run on that new field, the first original field that was built there at the Medina Valley Complex, which which is Field One. Uh, I'd like some people to if they, if they know who hit the first home run, give me a text and let me know, and later on in the broadcast I'll let you know who that was that hit the first home run. Yep, and he celebrated a birthday this past week. And with that, we'll go ahead and take a quick break. Before we come back with the second half, you're listening to Panther Football, brought to you by North Park Chevrolet, and we'll continue in just a moment. QRC Health Mart Pharmacy is the pharmacy for Castroville. QRC Health Mart Pharmacy has an experienced staff with over 20 years of patient care, offering a full-service pharmacy for all of your prescription, specialty, diabetic, and over-the-counter needs, including free blood pressure monitoring and a convenient drive through Most major insurance companies and plans accepted. Open 9 to 6 Monday through Friday and 9 to 1 on Saturday. QRC Health Mart Pharmacy, here to stay. 408 Highway 90 West in Castroville. Vite Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vipe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vipe, V-Y-P-E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Vipe magazine today. Get in the game with Vipe Media. At North Park Chevrolet in Casterville. We offer the most exceptional experience in sales and service. Shop our large new and pre-owned selection with complimentary maintenance on new vehicles, upfront posted pricing, 10-day trade-in appraisal guarantee, and a 48-hour return policy. Our factory trained technicians will take care of you after the sale with easy menu pricing, courtesy vehicles, and a complimentary car wash with every service. Come see us at 1955 Highway 90 East or call 210-640-3184. Shop us online or schedule service at npchevy.com. Experience Chevrolet, the North Parkway. Headed out to the game? Then make a stop at your local Valley Mart convenience store. With 12 area locations, Valley Mart is always right around the corner. Fuel yourself and your vehicle with quality branded gas and diesel, snacks, and fountain drinks. Always convenient, well lit, with clean restrooms. Valley Mart, family owned and operated since 1984 and a proud supporter of Medina Valley Athletics and area youth sports for over 30 years. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. We're back here at Lions Stadium as both teams have come out on the field for the second half, getting warmed up. Um, I'd like to also thank Brendan back at the KMAC Vibe Studios for sticking with us here through this lightning delay and having to stick it out through the weather with us back at the studio. Um, thanks to thanks to him for, for staying there and keeping us on here. And Garris is getting hazardous yep. pay for having to stick around in this lightning delay <laughs> and putting up with you and I for oh, yeah. an hour and 45 minutes of silence. <laughs> It wasn't really silent. No, no. But uh, luckily, luckily the weather's held off here for now. We're going to get this second half started. Medina Valley's going to receive the ball. Seven to seven is your halftime score here, and 
you know, hopefully Medina Valley can have a pretty good push here to start the second half and, and get some points on the board. I've had a couple of people text me and trying to guess a trivia question, and they haven't gotten it right yet. And Medina Valley will send Moduling, Bippert, and McCauley back deep to receive the kickoff. And it's number 49 for Lockhart doing the kicking. Eduardo Ponce. Was As he the young man who kicked the extra point? I don't no, think so. No, right? he's no, not. Okay. He's, he's kicked off for them twice, but he doesn't kick the extra point. Okay. I've noticed that, and that, that's odd to me that I know a lot of college teams do that too where their place kicker. It's the, usually the punter sometimes. And, and they don't, like, they have a different guy that kicks off than what kicks their field goals. That's that just odd to me. As Ponce ready to kick it away. A low line drive squib kick that's going to be fielded by Bippert inside the 15. Gets up to the 20. Trying to get to the outside. And he's running east and west. Cuts it upfield to the 25-yard line where he's brought down. And it'll be first and 10 Medina Valley to start the second half. Brought down by number four for the Lions. That's Cameron Jackson. So it'll be first and 10 Medina Valley from their own 25-yard line. As the Panther offense huddled up near the sideline, now they'll head out onto the field. And we'll see if they'll be able to, to move the football here to start the second half. Panthers will come out with one wide receiver wide out to the left. Medina Valley moving right to left. Child under center, a man in motion. Takes a snap. Going to hand it to Gibson up the gut with room to run across the 35 to the 40 and out across the 40 to the 43-yard line. A pickup of about 15 yards and a first down for the Panthers. Eddie Tucar on the stop, but that was a great run by Gibson right up the middle, pounding his way for a first down. 17-yard gain. They get 18 yards up to the 43-yard line. It'll be first and 10 Medina Valley. One man wide out to the left again for the Panthers. Takes a snap. They're going to hand it to Gibson again. He's hit and falls forward for a pickup of five yards on the play. Good hard run by Gibson. It'll bring up second and five. Yeah, number 36 getting up from the bottom of the pile. That's Ismail Duncan. But Gibson took him for a little ride too. And so two plays, and Medina Valley's got the ball up to the Panther 48-yard line. They'll stay with that same slot formation with one man wide out to the left. Man in motion. They're going to hand the ball off Gibson again, who's got a little ball. He bounces outside, gets up across the 40, inside the 40. I mean, he got hit and pushed back and then bounced it to the outside and managed to pick up some extra yards. That's showing great footwork by Gibson. He yep. usually pounds, and that time he hit a, a little wall up the middle and bounced it outside. He got about eight. Eight and a half yards after contact. Yeah, and he gets down to the Lockhart 38-yard line. It's first and 10, Medina Valley. Thompson on the stop for the Lions. Nobody wide out for Medina Valley on this formation. They'll send a man in motion. Child's going to keep it himself. Gets to the outside to the 35, up to the 30, to the 25, and he's pushed out of bounds. It'll be a first down for the Panthers. Pickup of 13 yards for Child on the keeper. Great blocking downfield by Satello and also by number 55 leading the charge. That's Yancey Miller. He was out in front of that play, 10 yards downfield. Jared still engaged with the blocker. And that's a good job when you get that far down the field yep. for not getting charged with the holy yeah, penalty. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. And the referee's going to blow play dead here for a second. I think someone's missing a chin strap. That's Man. our center, Spencer Payne, coming out. Yep. Well, and if your I don't know if his helmet came off or what, but if your helmet comes off during the play, you have to come out for one play. And that looks like that's yeah. all that's going to happen. And they're going to send number 54 in for the Panthers. That's going to be Nathaniel Trammell, who's going to come in to center the football each taking a couple of practice snaps on the sideline here. It's going to be first down and 10 for Medina Valley. The ball is at the Lockhart 24-yard line. And 
As Medina Valley huddled up, 9.58 and counting to go, third quarter. Child under Tremel to center, and you never know how this is going to go with the first exchange here. Takes the snap, hands it off. Gibson up the middle with some room to run across the 20, 15, still plowing his way forward, pulling his way for more yards inside the 10. And he's going to get a pickup of about 13 yards in a first down. And what a run by Gibson. He drug four Lions along there with him. And all of them, instead of trying to tackle him, they were trying to strip the ball away from him. And he just would not go down. No, he put both hands over the football like you're supposed to do and just kept those legs pumping and fell forward. A gain of 13. It's going to be first and goal for Medina Valley from the nine-yard line. Panthers with no wide receivers here, and I think timeout's been taken by Lockhart with 9-10 to go. Timeout brought to you by Peerless Equipment, and we'll take a quick break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football, and we'll continue in a moment. Retweet scores, schedules, and more. Tweet at MV Broadnet for MVBN. Peerless Equipment, your South Texas irrigation experts. Peerless Equipment specializes in sales and service of irrigation equipment to the agricultural and wildlife industries. This includes hose reels, big guns, pivot systems, underground pipelines, turbine well pumps, booster pumps, motors, valves, and an inventory of much more. Stop by one of their locations in Hondo and Pearsall or give them a call at 210-434-7867. Peerless Equipment, bringing water to you. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. Back here at Lions Stadium as we come out of the timeout. 9-10 to go third quarter. Medina Valley with first and goal from the Lockhart nine-yard line. Child will go under center with no wide receivers. The Panthers moving right to left. Alec takes the snap. Hands the ball, Gibson up the middle, and this time he's met and dropped uh, for about no gain on the play. I think he got to the line of scrimmage, maybe got a yard. Elijah Sanchez leading the charge there for the Lions. Looks like he got one yard. It'll bring up second and goal from the eight-yard line. It's the first time they've really been able to bottle him up on this drive up the middle. We'll see if they try to hit one to the outside here. Nobody wide again for the Panthers. Child takes the snap, hands it to Gibson up the gut, pushing his way toward the end zone. He'll fall forward. Did he get in? No signal yet from the referee, and they're going to spot him down just inside the one-yard line. It's going to be third and goal. And Payne is back in there at center, and that's right where they ran right over him in between him and Yancey Miller. And Miller once again downfield blocking on the linebacker. So a good job, Jared. It, I don't even think it is a yard. They got it marked about a half a yard, wouldn't you say? So the point of the football is inside the one-yard line. So, yeah, Mari's right. It's about half a yard to go to the end zone. Third down and goal. Child under center takes the snap, hands it to Gibson, and he's in for the touchdown. And Medina Valley will take a 13-7 lead pending an extra point here. And that was that drive, basically, Medina Valley ran the ball all the way downfield. They took it uh, 75 yards for the score. That play right off the strong side, right in between the guard and the tackle. And Gibson pretty much untouched all the way in the end zone as he was still standing when he got about five yards deep. So Gibson with his second touchdown of the evening and Grove on to try to tack on the extra point. Marsh is the holder for Medina Valley. High snap, gets it down. The kick by Grove is up, and it is good. So with 7.52 to play in the third quarter, your new score, Medina Valley 14, Lockhart 7. We'll take a quick break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football, brought to you by North Park Chevrolet, and we'll continue in a moment. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. 
Qualifications, rules, and limitations apply. Rates, rewards, and restrictions may vary by account. Contact institution for details. Tickets, popcorn, and sodas. That'll be $35. Cash or debit? Debit! I mean, I'd like to use my debit card, please. Uh, Can I do it? Okay. All right! Swiping now! What if paying with your debit card was always this exciting? Kasasa Cashback is a free checking account that pays you for everyday debit card purchases every month you qualify. Plus, with ATM withdrawal fee refunds nationwide, that's a lot of extra cash to spend on whatever you like. Ask for free Kasasa checking at Community National Bank. Member FDIC. You're watching Medina Valley Football. This is the Medina Valley Sports Network. We're back here at Lions Stadium as Grof is ready to... Dawson Grof ready to kick it away. And kickoff is brought to you by Royce Grof Oil and Exxon. As Lockhart with four men back deep to receive... Grove's kick is a low kick that's going to bounce and be fielded. It's still on the ground. Fielded at the 15-yard line by Ellison trying to get outside up to the 20-25, and he's brought down from behind, and it'll be first and 10 Lockhart from their own 25-yard line. Number 34, Taylor Weir on the stop there for the Panthers on the kickoff. And we saw, we didn't see Daquan Ellison run the ball in that first, after the time, or after the, lightning delay but he's back in the ball game now I know that he was hobbling a little bit right before that lightning delay well that hard tackle around midfield he got up gingerly what the play right before and they hand this ball to a lot of he is hit stuck and dropped by I think that's Grant Snyder over there on the far side and Grant just met him at the line of scrimmage, and I think he won that war right there. Yeah, now Danya is a, is a pretty big guy. He gets a little steam going, and Grant hit him and just dropped him. Well, the lower your gravity pays off, and Grant can get low. It was a pickup of a yard. It's second down and nine coming up here for the Lockhart Lions. No wide receivers. They hand the ball off Ellison, and he's brought down. And that's Snyder again on the tackle by himself. A pickup of two. It's going to be third and seven. Big third down here for the Panthers. You need to get your offense back on the field. Ball at the Lockhart 28-yard line. Third down and seven here upcoming for the Lions. 6.53 and counting to go here in the third quarter. As they taking their time getting the play in here. The play clock shows 10 seconds, and their center hasn't even come to the line yet. There he comes with seven to go. They come up to the line with four to go. Takes the snap, hands it off. Ellison cuts up field, and he is met. And then a whole host of Panthers bring him down. It'll be fourth and five. Dawson Grove met him in the backfield, followed up by Ferguson. Grove turned him right back into the middle to the big number 58, Ferguson, and that was it. So fourth down upcoming, and Lockhart's going to be forced to punt. Grove, Weir, and, and Snyder, you could tell the defensive line is doing their job because those young men are all over the field making the tackles. Yeah, especially Grant on that. those first two plays in there on both of those tackles, solo tackles for him. And that time Dawson turned him in like he was supposed to, chipped him off right to Ferguson. Modeling and Bippert back deep to receive for the Panthers. Ellison ready to punt it away, takes the snap. His kick is a end-over-end kick that's going to be fielded by Modling at the 38. Starts up field to the 45, and he gets across the 45 to the 46, and that's where the Panthers will start with good field position. Thompson ran him out of bounds, but you like to see that as soon as he caught the ball, he went north and south up the field, got positive yards. 5.37 to play in the third quarter. Medina Valley with a 14-7 lead They after scoring. Three and out for the Lions and Medina Valley's offense right back out there. We'll see if they can go up by a couple of scores here because that's going to put a lot of pressure on Lockhart if they can march this downfield and get up by a couple of scores. Medina Valley comes out here. Slot formation. Gibson the lone back behind. Child takes the snap. They're going to hand the ball off to Viafane. Coming from the slot position, he gets up across the 50 to the 49-yard line to pick up a five yards. It'll bring up second and five. Faustino Gonzalez on the stop there. Little triggeration there as Villafane took that ball on the inside handoff. And I'll tell you what, he got five hard yards. Yep, second and five ball 
into Lockhart territory at their 48-yard line. Panthers with that tight set once again. Takes the snap, fakes it to Gibson. Child looking to throw, fires to Viafane, and it's over his head, incomplete. He was open. He had to kind of turn around and couldn't. Get, he got a paw on it, but wasn't able to haul it in. They'll bring up third and five. Beautifully set up play. He threw it to his back shoulder, though, and Viafane was turned to the inside, wanting it on the inside, and he had to turn back around. The throw was thrown a little bit errant. If that's thrown on target. He's got the first down and probably inside the 20. Yeah, you're you're right, Mari. So third and five upcoming here, and, and that play was opened up because of the play action by Child. Great play action. One wide receiver out to the right side here. They'll send a man in motion from left to right. Takes the snap, hands it to Gibson, looking for room, pushing his way forward. He's going to be about a yard short of the first down. It's going to bring up fourth and one. Ball is at the Lockhart 44-yard line. I don't know, Mari, do you go for it here? Well, that was two car again on the stop. What I would do here is you got to be disciplined. I try to get it the cheap way. Try to get them offside. Try sides. to get them offside. Try to catch them being over-aggressive. If not, and, and then you do decide to go for it, you call timeout and set up a play. They come to the line quickly here on fourth down. Takes the snap. Hands it. Gibson first down and more up across the 40, 35. Still on his feet inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. A pickup of about... 17 on fourth down in Medina Valley, first and 10. That was on a quick move, the first sound there. They caught him off guard. The offensive line just fired off. That was Gibson a big did the hole. rest. There was a big hole there. 4.08 and counting third quarter. Medina Valley, first and 10 at the Lockhart 28. And and that could have been an occasion there where they were looking for the hard count. Yep. Yeah, Try and Medina Valley caught them off guard there. Takes the handoff to the slot man, trying to get around the outside. And he's yanked down from behind. That was number 23 for the Panthers on the carry. Wesley Pardo coming from the slot position. Maybe got a yard. They do give him a one-yard gain. It'll be second and nine. Lewis Torres on the stop. And if he could just avoid the linebacker Torres, he had a lot of distance on that inside trap. He just could not avoid the first tackler. Panthers to the line quickly this time. No wide receivers. Child will hand it. Gibson up the middle. Bounces to the outside inside the 20, 15, and he's brought down from behind inside the 15. Looks like they'll spot him about the 12-yard line, make it the 13. It's first and 10 Panthers again. Torres and Garcia on the stop, and Gibson signal to the sidelines. I don't want to come out. I want to stay in. That time he was stopped right up the middle, but he bounced it to the outside, and Made a lot out of it. It's first and 10. Medina Valley can get a first down inside the two-yard line. First and 10 for the Panthers. Nobody wide out for Medina Valley. They come out with a T, T backfield here. Takes the snap. Hands it. Gibson up the middle with a lot of room. Gets inside the five-yard line. He's brought down close to a first down. I think it's going to be first and goal Panthers from around the three. Going to be very close on the spot. I'd actually thought I would, wouldn't mind seeing him move it short, but they're going to say he got all the way down right to the two, Right Jared. to the two, yeah. First and goal Medina Valley from the two-yard line. Number 22 there on the tackle. That was George Renteria, but that was another vicious run yeah, and I by just James Keep Gibson. giving it to him. Keep giving him the football. They're, they're not showing that they can stop him, and as long as they can't stop him, just keep on pounding that football. You have to give credit to that offensive line because they yeah. are opening up some holes. Yeah, you know, Lockhart not getting any touches on Gibson until he's five yards downfield, and then he'll just run, run with you for five more yards. As we tick down to two minutes to go, third quarter, Panthers to the line of scrimmage. Nobody out wide. Hands it to Gibson. In the end zone, touchdown. A two-yard run for Gibson. His third touchdown of the ball game, and Medina Valley leads 20-7. to seven. Jared, I want to go over that offensive line once again. At center is Spencer Payne. At strong guard, number 55, Yancey Miller. At quick guard, number 52, Josh Valenzuela. At strong side tackle, number 53, Edward Roya. And at quick tackle, number 74, Jonah Barra. And the tight end is number 80, Aaron Sotelo. And them boys are doing a tremendous job tonight. As Grove ready to try to tack on the extra point here for the Panthers. Marsh the holder. Low snap. I think Medina Valley jumped there. Had a false start. 
play was stopped. And it is false start against the Panthers, so they'll move him back five yards for the try. You know, the offensive linemen, to me, never get the credit they deserve. No, they, they don't. You know, we, we, we glorify Gibson and, and the running backs, but if there's no holes there, nobody can run. So the ball will be placed at the 15 where he kicks it from. This will be a 25-yard extra point attempt. The kick is up from Grof, and it is no good wide right, and I think they jumped off sides. Yep. That's going to call it on their left defensive end, jumping yeah. way into the neutral zone. So this will give the five yards back, and they'll get to redo the try. Offside against Lockhart is the call, so they'll move the ball back up the five yards, and it'll be a 20-yard attempt this time from Grof instead of 25. And these are big extra points yeah. in a close ball game. Yeah, absolutely. It's only a, this is only a two-touchdown game. Minute 56 to go, third quarter, as Grof gets ready to try to tack on the extra point here. This will be the second attempt for him. And they're going to they're going to be offsides again, but Grove's kick is up and this time he drills it straight through. And even if he was offside, they're going to decline that anyway. So with a minute 56 to go in the third quarter, your score Medina Valley 21, Lockhart 7. We'll take a break and come back. You're listening to Panther Football brought to you by North Park Chevrolet and we'll continue in just a moment. M V B N. Double T Outfitters offers deer, duck, turkey, quail, and exotic hunts in southwest Texas on over 20,000 low-fenced acres. They facilitate professional guide services, lodging, and fantastic meals while providing the best in southwest hunting. Contact Double T Outfitters to find out details about their current package hunts. Contact owner Brett Ferguson at 210-413-1597 or online at DoubleTHunting.com. You're watching Medina Valley Football. This is the Medina Valley Sports Network. Back here at Lions Stadium, 21-7, your new score is Dawson Grove ready to kick it away. Kickoff brought to you by Royce Grove Oil and Exxon. And they're going to kick this one on the ground. It's going to be covered up at the 28-yard line by number 34, them Noah Garcia. And he did the right thing there. He just fell on top of that ball, and Lockhart will have it first and 10 from the 29-yard line. I want to make a correction there, Jared, on the offensive line. Out there uh, for the injured starter is Josh McAllister. He's been out there all game. So Josh McAllister is out there, number 64, on the offensive line for the Panthers, doing a tremendous job. They actually spot the ball at the 30-yard line. So first and 10, Lockhart from there, down by two touchdowns. Takes the snap, hands the ball. Well, they kept it himself, makes the first man miss. That's the first time we have seen Edwards run the football, and he picks up seven yards. He's brought down by Dawson Grof and Cole Modulin on the stop there. Grof turned him back into the inside, but that is the first time the quarterback has actually run that play. You think that was a busted play? In my, well, he faked the handoff. I thought he was going to roll out and try to throw, and then he just made a guy miss and started upfield. Because he had no blocking out in front of him. No. They'll come right to the line of scrimmage. They hand the ball off to Ellison, coming near side, cuts it upfield, has a first down. Needed four, got five. Gets up to the 42-yard line. Snyder and Santos on the stop there for Medina Valley. So it'll be first down and 10 from the Lockhart 42. Minute six to go here in the third quarter. And, you know, a lot of pressure now on this Lockhart offense. They're a, they're a ball control team. Takes the handoff, and the quarterback kept that. I don't think he got the ball where he needed to go. He was bobbling the football, and he's going to be dropped for about a four-yard loss on the play. In there on the pressure was number 63, Zach Hecker. And he looked like he tried to hand the ball off to the lead back. And he bobbled it. He hit him off on the shoulder pad, and he bobbled it, and that blew up the whole play, and Hecker made sure that it was going to stay blown up. It's going to be second down and 14 upcoming here for Lockhart after the four-yard loss on the play. They'll come out in the I formation, takes the snap, 
Hands the ball to the slot man. Ellison with room to run gets out across the 45 to the 49 yard line. It's going to bring up third down and four. Modulin and Snyder once again on the stop. But the Panthers gave up a lot of yardage there. It was third down, second down and long, and That's they got 10 yards. Almost 10, right? Yeah, they got a 10 yard gain. It was third and four, or second and 14. Now it's going to be third down. And that is the end of the third quarter of play. Your score after three, Medina Valley 21, Lockhart 7. We'll be back in a moment. You're listening to Panther football, and we'll continue in just a moment. Articles on all your favorite coaches, players, and more at mvbn.net, the official website of the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. When you put money in our bank, you started a chain reaction. We made an auto loan. A local car dealer sold a car. A car salesman got a commission. His wife bought groceries. The checker at the supermarket got a paycheck. You made that happen. Thanks. Come home to Castroville State Bank. Member FDIC. Visit us online at CastrovilleStateBank.com. You're watching Medina Valley Football. This is the Medina Valley Sports Network. We're back here at Lions Stadium. Welcome back to Panther Football brought to you by North Park Chevrolet. We'll flip sides of the field here. Lockhart now moving right to left with the football. Third down and four upcoming from their own 49-yard line. Medina Valley up 21-7. to They hand the ball off to Ellison. He's met in the hole. Falls forward. It'll be close to the first down. It'll depend on the ball spot. He's right close to the chains. I think he's just short. Snyder and Marsh on the stop. They, they gave him a pretty good spot, I think. Wow, they gave him a real good spot. Get to the Panther. Just the nose of the ball is touching the Panther 48-yard line. But he's going to be short well, about a half a foot. They're half a measure. yard. Well, if they, he's going to be short. Yeah, they're, they're going to be short by about six inches. They're going to come out and measure it here. I, I think if you're Lockhart, you have to go for it here down two scores with the type of offense that they run. Ball control offense that runs time off the clock. If they punt it away, they, they haven't shown that they can stop Medina Valley here in the second half. And it is going to be fourth down. They don't even come out to measure it. No, the ball needed to get past the, the hash mark, and it is on the right side of the hash mark, and it needed to be halfway in between the next two. So they come out here in a power eye set. Quarterback sneak up the middle, and he's got the first down easily. Picks up three yards on the play. Quarterback just went up and touched the, the center and said, let's go, and they just fired off for the first down. So ball at the Medina Valley 44-yard line. Make it the 46-yard line. With 11.06 to go and counting here in the ball game. Lockhart comes to the line of scrimmage here, takes the snap, rolling out right, looking to throw. Fires on the run right side, and it's going to be incomplete. Broken up by number 30 for the Panthers, Chris Lopez on the coverage. Pass was intended for the big fullback, number 39. Is that the first time he's been in the ball game? I don't know, but he, I mean, he was That's 40 Richard, yards downfield. Richard Moya. Well, here's the thing. If he if he doesn't underthrow that, he's got a shot at oh, him. He was, was open. open. That totally caught the Panthers by surprise. Because yeah, Lopez had to play catch up to the football just to be able to jump up and get a hand on it. And if that's not underthrown, it might be a touchdown. So it'll be second down and 10. Tight formation here. They're going to hand the ball off to the slot man. Ellison gets some room to run, and he's brought down around the 30-yard line. A pickup of 14 yards. Another first down for Lockhart. Dawson Grove and Dante Henry on the stop. But a good run and a good first down for the Lions. That, They're doing what they need here. That was Daytron Ellison from the slot position. 14-yard gain. First and 10 from the Panther 31-yard line. Lockhart back to the line of scrimmage. Again with that tight set. They hand the ball off to Ellison. Trying to get outside to the right side. Makes a man miss. Tries to cut up field. And he's met right away on that far sideline. He does manage to pick up three or four yards on the play. Taylor Weir on the stop there for the Panthers. Number 30 had a shot at him. 
for no gain. And he was just too elusive and got away from 30. But 34 finished him up. But he got five yards. Second and five upcoming here. Ball at the Panther 26-yard line. Under 10 minutes to play in the ball game. Lockhart down 21 to 7. The Lions will send Twins out to the left side of the formation this time. Out of the eye, they're going to throw quickly here. Wide receiver screen to Ellison. Has some room to run inside the 20, inside the 15. Down to around the 12-yard line. And another first down here, a pickup of about 16 yards for Lockhart. Snyder on the stop once again for the Panthers. That's their first completed pass of the ball game. But with the quickness of Ellison, he made the first man miss easy and had a lot of room to run downfield. It's first and 10 from the 12-yard line. Takes the snap. Hands the ball off with a lot of room to run. Ellison to the end zone. Touchdown, Lockhart. It was just a trap play. They ran it all the way to the end zone, pretty much untouched. A 12-yard touchdown run for Datron Ellison. And just like that, it's 21-13 with 9-10 to go. And that was pretty much all Datron Ellison in yeah. that drive for the Wildcat. I mean, for the Lions. Not only did he produce on the run, he caught the lone pass and rushed down for a first down. So Lockhart responds right back with... Points of their own here. As they try to tack on the extra point, this is Eduardo Ponce trying to tack it on. His kick is blocked by the Panthers. Picked up by Medina Valley, and they're going to try to take it back for two points, and they are going to go all the way. That's number 30 for the Panthers. Chris Lopez, who... Picked up the blocked extra point and ran it back for two points. He actually blocked it and then picked it up. He came off that far side off the edge and blocked that. Picked it up for two in Medina Valley with a 23-13 lead. And how huge is that extra two points now putting you up by two scores? Two scores and, and that was big. And showing some speed there too. He just outran Lockhart to the end zone. Took that ball, what? 85 yards. 85 yards. He picked it up at about the 15-yard line and was able to outrun everybody to the end zone. Two points for the Panthers. 23-13 is your score. And that, Jared, that's being heads up. That's yep. knowing the situation, knowing that you can pick that ball up and, and take it in for two points the other way. Yeah, because the way the ball was bouncing on the ground, a lot of times you're taught just fall on the football. But in this case, if you fall on it, the play is over. Just pick it up and run it. Two points the other way. 9-10 to go in the ball game. It's now 23-13, and that puts a lot of pressure on Lockhart here. A three-point swing. Absolutely, and, and Medina Valley has not been stopped here in the second half by Lockhart. We'll see what the Lions do here. You might see some sort of onside kick. As Ponce comes out to kick it away, Medina Valley with Moduling, Bippert, and... I believe McCauley back deep to receive as they tee it up at the 40-yard line. That Those front five for the Panthers need to be heads up right here. I know there's 9-10 to go, but Lockhart not with a big quick strike threat. And it is an onside kick. Takes a bounce, and it's still on the ground, and Lockhart recovered it at the Medina Valley 41-yard line. The Panthers, he had it there, and I think one of the Lockhart guys hit him, knocked him over. The ball kept bouncing, and Lockhart fell on top of it. There is a flag back at the 38-yard line here. They might have been offside on the kickoff. Well, from where it is there, it's got to be yep. against Lockhart. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a big break for Medina Valley. That is Valley. a huge break for the Panthers. And so they're going to have to re-kick this, I believe. As we wait to see, it is offside <coughs> against Lockhart. They're going to have to re-kick because the Panthers surely don't want to take the play because Lockhart recovered. No, but i got to give Ponce credit. He kicked that onside kick perfect toward the sideline. It took the big hop that you want, and he gave his team a chance to make a play on it. A lot of times in high school, you don't see somebody who can do a good onside kick, and he, he did a good one. You see 11 new guys out there yeah. now. You have your hands team out there yeah. now. Well, and, and expecting the onside no, kick. No, and, and I don't think but Medina Valley was ready for that. But you should have 
kind of anticipated before that. I mean, now we did. Two, so now being two, you know, with the two score advantage now from pa the Panthers running the extra point back. Yeah, and you know that's uh, that's huge for Lockhart. They had recovered it. Now you have to re kick it. Medina Valley expecting it now with ten guys up here, right by the fifty yard line. They'll move it back to the thirty five. As they'll get ready to re-kick, and I, I honestly think they're going to pop this ball up and try to see if they can get one in this gap here. They do kick it on the ground, a squib through there. It's going to be fielded at the 25, over to the 30, tries to cut up field. Flags come in late. Looks like it's going to be a hold against the Panthers. And now we got some extracurricular stuff going on here. No flags flying in late yet. Flag was thrown by the... Referee from way back at the 15 yard line behind the play, so that's usually going to be a block in the back or, or a holding penalty. And we'll see what the call is from the referees. He has yet to actually make the call, he moved the, the flag to the 35 yard line. And they're going to talk this over now among all the referees. I wonder if they want to throw something after the play with all the extracurricular, but nobody threw a flag of their hat down on the field. Nope. But they are, all the officials are lined up together here trying to figure out what they want to do. It will be Medina Valley football just from from where? As the referee ready to make his call as he goes over toward the Lockhart sideline. And they're, they're Talking to the Lockhart coaches here, I think, trying to let them know what's going on. You have a personal foul, chop block against Medina Valley. And that's a big one. Yeah, that's a 15-yarder. And now you got a necessary roughness against Lockhart, so these should actually offset uh, each that's other. That's exactly what they're doing. They're bringing it back out to the 35. Yep. So you get the unsportsmanlike after the play, the, the chop block, during the play, offset each other. It'll be first and ten Panthers from the 35-yard line. And right now, if you're Medina Valley, you're up by ten points. Just get some first downs and eat the clock here. That that's Use all of the 25-second yep. play clock. Or 40-second in between. 8.59 to go. And we got flags down here before... Delay of game. Oh, what do they call it? Oh, the, the, they play clock, the play clock was at 17, and it's going to be against Lockhart, I believe. I think they're going to get them for, for 12 men. Well, no, I think they're going to get them for uh, mimicking the snap count. Well, they called a delay a game well, against Lockhart. Well, that's what that is. Yeah. They're trying to, they're, they tried to, to draw Medina Valley off sides. Somebody on the defensive side was trying to mimic the snap count like the quarterback, and that's a delay of game. So it'll be first and five now for the Panthers. They come out with a T backfield. Gibson right behind Child in the formation. Looks like they also have Via Fain in there. Takes the snap, hands it off to Gibson right up the gut, and he's going to be stopped after a gain of a, looks like two yards. It'll bring up second and three. Brought down by number 35, Alex Sosa on the defense, and a big stop, but you got five yards free on first down, so that's just going to bring up a second and four. <clears throat> Ball up to the Medina Valley 42-yard line. And the Panthers are taking their time now in the huddle as they come to the line of scrimmage. Second down and three upcoming here. That T backfield again for the Panthers. This time they hand it off Pardo trying the right side. He's got a first down and more. Stays in bounds. Falls forward to... About midfield, looks like they'll spot him at the Panther 49-yard line, but first down, Medina Valley. He was cut down by number three, Daytron Ellison. Yeah. Good open field tackle, but Porto did his job, got the first down. And that was actually Solace on the carry. That was Jane, uh, number 25, Solace? Yep. yep. As, Jacob Solace. Yes, yeah, Porto does come into the game now. Via Fane comes to the sideline for the moment. Under eight minutes to go. Medina Valley staying with that T backfield here. Takes the snap. Hands it Pardo left side this time. Trying to get outside across midfield. And he's taken down around the Lockhart 47-yard line. 
not by the first tackler, but it was brought down by number 35. That's Alex Sosa once again, but he got about three, three and a half yards. They'll spot him at the 48. A pickup of three. It'll be second down and seven upcoming here for Medina Valley. 23 to 13, your score. Panthers back to the line of scrimmage. They stay with that T backfield. Takes the snap, hands the ball off, Gibson up the middle, and he falls forward for a gain of maybe a yard. It's going to be third down and six. 55 getting up from the bottom of the pile for the Lions. That's Lewis Torres. Big third down, Jared. Yeah, it is a big third down here. you got 650 and counting to go in the ball game. You're up 23-13. to 13. You're in the Lockhart side of the field. Uh, I don't think this is four-down territory here. I think if you don't make this, you punt it, try to pin them deep and make them go the, the length of the field. But nonetheless, we'll see if the Panthers can pick it up here on third down. Takes the snap, hands it off. Gibson, a lot of room. First down, Medina Valley gets inside the 40 to the 45-yard line. Big run there, untouched off the left tackle. And Medina Valley with a first down, and they can eat some more clock up. Alex Thompson on the stop, untouched, and that's because you're – Strong, your weak side of the line just opened up a hole there that Gibson, you could have drove an 18-wheeler through. Big, For, big conversion. Yeah, absolutely. First and 10, ball at the Lockhart 46-yard line. It's Medina Valley back to the line of scrimmage. They come out with that slot back position. Sends a man in motion. Child looking to throw. Sets up under pressure from behind, trying to get away, and he's brought down from behind. And I think they were trying to keep catch him off guard there, but I don't understand. You've been running the ball all half. Why well, would, you know, Lewis, that, but. Lewis Torres run him down from behind, Jared, but I think that time Medina Valley outsmarted themselves. Yep. You're pounding the ball away. The, the, the clock is your ally right now as you're two scores ahead, and you just put yourself with a running team back behind the chain, second down and 12. Yep, second and 12. The good thing is there it does eat more clock because he didn't throw the ball incomplete because he wanted to throw the football. They'll come out here with that slot put, slot back. Hands it to Gibson, trying the right side. He falls forward to the 35-yard line. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage, looks like, and it'll be third down and, well, it looks like they'll give him third and nine. Elijah Sanchez, number six on the stop there. One of the defensive linemen for the Lions. Under five minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Ball at the 35-yard line of Lockhart. Third down and nine upcoming for the Panthers. Comes to the line of scrimmage. No wide receivers here for Medina Valley. Takes the snap. Hands it Gibson. Trying the left side. He's not going to get the first down. He gets down to about the 31-yard line. Pick up a four, and it's going to be third and five. Elijah, fourth and five. Elijah Sanchez once again on the stop for the Lockhart Lions. We'll see what the Panthers choose to do here. Under four and a half to go. I think they're going to go for it here on fourth down. Why not? You're on the 35-yard line. The first down here pretty much salts the game away. Yeah, ball at the Lockhart 31. They need five yards to pick up the first down. 4-13 and counting. They can run this down to about four minutes. Ten on the play clock right now. As the Panthers come to the line of scrimmage. Comes out in that slot back position. Takes the snap, and I think they got him offside. The ball comes loose late. No flags were thrown. Two men from Lockhart jumped across the line you've, when it was snapped. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to have, you've got to have called offsides. Both, both defensive tackles came across into and, the neutral zone when the ball was snapped and, and no flags. The center did a good job yeah. of slapping the ball when they were in, in the neutral zone. I cannot believe there is not a flag thrown on that play. So a turnover on downs. Lockhart will have it first and 10 from their own 38-yard line. And, and Mari's right. That was just a blown call right there. I mean, there's two guys in the neutral zone when the ball snapped. How is that not offside? Mm. So first and 10, Lockhart here. They need two scores. We'll see if they can... Find something here. They'll come out in that tight formation. They're going to hand the ball off, trying to the right side, and he's going to be met and dropped for a loss on the play. That was number 24, Jesus Aldana on the carry, and he loses three yards. It'll bring up second and 13. Snyder and Grove first on the spot for the Panthers, and he was finished off by number 88, Steele Perry. 
And just eating clock right now for Lockhart. As we mentioned, they're not really a throwing team, and it's second down and 13. Ball back to the Lockhart 35. Still no wide receivers. Now they're going to roll out looking to throw. Throws on the run. That's complete. Ellison up to the 40, 45, and he slipped down. Oh, that's going to be a late flag. 15 yards and a first down. And that, I'm not going to say who did it, but that was a bonehead play as Ellison slipped down to the ground and a Medina Valley player came over and just flattened him. Yep, and that was right in front of the official. That's and be, right in front of the Medina Valley coaches. Yep, and that's going to be a 15-yard penalty. That's going to move the ball inside Panther territory. Yeah, I mean, that just you can't do that at this stage of the ball game. They'll mark off 15 yards. That'll move it down to the Medina Valley 39-yard line. 3.03 to play in the ballgame. Lockhart with two timeouts remaining. And Jared, that was another case of, of, of uh, the play action set up that play. Yep. They faked the handoff to Ellison. He flared out into the soft spot in the flat and just caught it and ran for the first down. And they he gets 15 on the penalty. They come right back to the line of scrimmage. They'll hand it Ellison. Cuts it upfield. Still on his feet to the 35, to the 30, and he's dragged down from behind. And it's a good thing he let him go because they might have got him for a horse collar if he would have actually dragged him down. That but was, another first down. That was Snyder and Henry on the play, but another first down showing the speed. Number three has basically been their whole offense here in the second half. Yeah, he has been, and it's going to be first and ten from the Medina Valley 25-yard line. 245 and counting to go. Lockhart right back to the line of scrimmage. They'll send Ellison in motion. They're going to run the option. Pitches it to him. Right side. Cuts it upfield. Not going to get anything. Got one yard on the play. It's going to bring up second and nine, and that clock's going to keep rolling. Panthers did a good job of stretching out that play. Steel Perry on the stop there for Medina Valley. Two Perry points. along with number 21, Dylan Fillinger on the stop. 223 and counting. Ball at the Panther 24 yards. I can't believe they're taking this long in between yeah, plays. They're Jerry. taking their sweet time here. Come back to the line of scrimmage. Out of the eye, takes a snap. Hands the ball off to Ellison, going right side, and he stopped again, not getting anywhere. And that was that was not number that three. Was that was number 21, Daquan Ellison. It's going to be third down and seven upcoming here for Lockhart. And uh, did they take a time? No, Daquan was down for a little bit, and they stopped the clock to make sure he got up. Yeah, and he, he is walking it off over there on the sideline. That was Phil that was Steele Perry and Trace Ferguson on the stop, and he laid there a little bit uh, as, you know, kind of shaken up as he did right before the lightning delay. Yeah. He has really not been a factor for him tonight. No, I mean, it's in the second half, it's been the other number Ellison. three, Datron, doing the damage. And we're going to get a timeout here, I believe. That it, then Lockhart did take a timeout. They're, they have one remaining, and uh, that, this timeout brought to you by Peerless Equipment. We'll stay right here. Uh, I, I've got to reiterate that the sense of not urgency no. on the Lockhart side is they're taking a long time in the huddles, and you know Cause, cause, you, you're down two scores. Yep. I mean you're down you're down ten points. There's a minute fifty eight to go. Uh, touchdown a two point conversion only makes this a two point game. They're going to have to get the ball back. And they're just, you know, you want to leave yourself as much time as possible well, and to I, get it back. And here's the thing. If they don't recover an onside kick, if they do score, the game's over because they only have one timeout well, remaining. I doubt if they go for two. No, they're not going to. I, I, I don't think that I'm just I'm just putting that out. Right. There. If they would go for two, they'd still have to get the ball back. But they'd score. have to score a touchdown instead of a field goal would tie it. Yep. They've got to score first. And this play is... Going right side, Ellison jumped over a man at the 10-yard line. He hurdled a Medina Valley. Did you see that? Did I see it? I'm still amazed. He, he literally hurdled, I mean, completely jumped and, and over the head. it wasn't because the, the guy was, was bent over. He was no. standing straight up, and he hurdled him. He jumped completely over him, and this ball is first and goal at the 6-yard line. Takes the snap. Rolling out left side, looking to throw. Throws over the top, incomplete. Throw over through his intended receiver. I believe that's number 39. That was 39 again out in the play. Richard Moya, and that wasn't even close. No, he overthrew him. Didn't give his guy a chance to catch that at all. Minute 32 to go. Dante Henry was on the coverage there for the Panthers. 
actually had good coverage. If the ball would have been thrown under thrown, Henry was right there for the pickoff. Minute 32 to play. It's second down and goal from the Medina Valley six-yard line. Lockhart back to the line. They come out in the eye formation. No wide receivers here. Takes the snap, pitches it out to Dequan. number 24. No, I think that was Aldonia. Was it Aldonia? Yeah, it was Al number 24. Aldonia on the carry. Gets down to the two-yard line. It'll be third and goal, but that clock's still running. Santos on the stop there for the Panthers. These are precious seconds ticking away. It's third down and goal. I formation takes the snap, hands the ball. Aldonia, well, right side Ellison, and he takes it in for the touchdown. Good play fake there. As the ball looked like it was going to the right side, the left side of the formation. Ellison just came out of the pile on the right side for the touchdown. And puts it in. 23-19 is the score. There's a minute five remaining in the game. And it looks like they're going to try to tack on the extra point here. It's going to come down to if Medina Valley covers an onside kick here. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we, we saw Ponce able to kick the onside kick. It's going to be whether or not that hands team from Medina Valley can, can be sound and just, just fall on the football. This is a big extra point here for Lockhart. Kick is up, and he missed it. No good, wide left, and that is a big hurt because now a field goal cannot tie it. They would have to score a touchdown if they can recover an onside kick. And that's what you're going to see because they only have two timeouts, a minute one. and five. One timeout left and a minute and five left on the clock. Yeah, so we're going to see an onside kick here from Lockhart, and that missed extra point is huge for them because, like we mentioned, now they have to score a touchdown in a minute five. They can't just get down here and try to kick a field goal to force some overtime. Well, and, and if you're not familiar with it, they changed the rule this year on the kickoff, too. You have to have five men on both sides of the kicker. You can't overload one side like you used to. Yep. You've got to have an even amount on both sides. And to me, that hurts the onside kick. Yeah, absolutely. Because you can't overload it, and that you know that's another safety right. issue that they come up with, which... I don't particularly like. No, I don't agree with that because either. Because football is, is, is a violent sport, and you know what you're getting into when you sign up to uh, play. I, I completely agree. I'm, I, I look at it this way. When you step out on the field, you know the risk you're taking. And if you don't want to get hit, you shouldn't play. Minute five to go I, here in the ball game. Don't get me wrong. I do like the helmet rule where you right. don't lead with the helmet. No, I, I, but, I, but don't take the fun out of the special teams, no. which is what they're trying to do. Yeah, you, you don't want to see anybody get injured, but you also don't want to see the integrity of the sport demised also. Hans team is out there again, Jared, for the Panthers. Ponce ready for the kick. And notice they have eight guys on the other yeah, side well, of the line. They're switching now. Now there's only four to this side of the kicker. He's going to try to kick it to the far side. The onside kick is there, and Medina Valley, I believe, recovered it. It went no. out of bounds. It went out of bounds. It, Medina Valley was the first one to get their hands on it, but that kick goes out of bounds, and that will be Medina Valley football, and that should be the ball game. All they have to do is put a knee down. Lockhart can only stop the clock yeah. one time. You know, Jared, I've actually seen in that situation when they try the onside kick, the receiving team just – Knocks it out of bounds. Yeah, just, just, throw it just out of knocks bounds. it out of bounds. What's the difference if you get a five-yard penalty backwards for illegal batting? You're still going to get the ball unless yeah, they recover. That's the only way that that the kicking team is going to get it is if they recover it. So with and a minute two to go, Lockhart with only a timeout left. The ball at the Pan or Medina Valley 47-yard line, and they're in the victors' formation. All they have to do is take a knee, and Child does put his knee down. Lockhart calls their timeout with a minute to go, but that is the last time they can stop the clock. Two more knees is all the Panthers have to take with the 40-second clock in between. Just got to make the clean exchange from the center to the quarterback. Put your knee down. Put your and knee down twice, and the ball game's over. This timeout brought to you by Peerless Equipment. Again, thanks to all our sponsors for making it possible to be on here and bring you these broadcasts as... Medina Valley looking like they're going to come away with the win here in the district opener. 1-0 uh, in district. That, that's a, this is a big win for the Panthers here if after this minute ticks off the clock. Especially with the upcoming game, Bernie Champion coming to Medina Valley. And, and Champion. With an 0-1 record. Yeah, coming district. off a loss. Panthers could gain two 
could beat two ahead after yeah, next week. Yeah, that's going to be a big game next week against Champion at Panther Stadium. Victor's formation for Medina Valley. Child puts his knee down, and Lockhart unable to stop the clock as we tick under 55 seconds to go here in the ball game. And Medina Valley should only have to put their knee down one more time. As there is about a 17-second difference between the play clock and the game clock. Medina Valley right back to the line of scrimmage. 30 seconds and counting to go. This should be it for, for the Panthers. Child takes the snap, puts his knee down. And that should end the ball game as we tick under 20 seconds. And your final score here this evening, after all the weather delay and everything is going to be, Medina Valley 23, Lockhart 19. Medina Valley is going to improve to 3-1, and 1-0 and in district play. Lockhart will fall to 2-2. Two and two. They will be 0-1 in district play as the clock now shows zero. So that is your final, 23-19. Medina Valley takes the win. We'll go ahead and take a quick break and come back to wrap things up. You're listening to Panther Football, brought to you by North Park Chevrolet, and we'll continue in just a moment. Broadcast Network on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at MVBroadnet and visit the official website at MVBN.net. Get the latest and join the conversation about all things Medina Valley sports. Come on, let's talk. From West Texas all the way to the bio and all points in between. I saw miles and miles of Texas. All the this is the KMAC Sports Medina Network, bringing your teams to you. You're watching Medina Valley Sports. This is the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. We're back here at Lions Stadium. Final score here tonight, Medina Valley 23, Lockhart 19. We had about an hour and a half weather delay earlier here in the second quarter. Um, fortunately, it was 7-7 at the time. Medina Valley came back out. Nobody would score. It would be 7-7 at halftime. The Panthers came out, and Lockhart was unable to stop them in the second half. And we're going to go ahead and give the player of the game that's brought to you by Security State Bank to James Gibson, the running back from Medina Valley, because he was he was unstoppable here for the Panthers tonight. That the defense had their hands full with him. Uh, give the offensive line a lot of credit for opening up. I was going to say for him. honorable mention players of the game. The offensive line. Yeah, they opened a lot of holes from him, but Gibson after contact a lot of yards after contact. Dragging piles, dragging players with him downfield, grinding out those runs, and a, and a great job by Gibson here in the ball game. And he had three touchdowns for the Panthers. Enough said with that, Jared, and, and you did give credit to the offensive line, and a lot of yards after the catch, a lot of uh, after the the initial tackler by Gibson, and a good mix up, a mix you know with the running backs, Gibson. Just you know, overpowered the Lockhart Lions when the when the Medina Valley Panthers needed a big play, a big run. He pretty much gave it to the Panthers. And in the second half, it was Medina Valley's offense along with their defense. But the offense made the job easy for the defense because they held the ball a long time. And I believe they only on one possession did not score. Yeah, it was, and that was that final drive down here at the end when they should have been off sides and it wasn't yep. called. Uh, yeah, that was the only drive that the Panthers didn't score on in the second half. Um, very fortunate for us tonight that we were able to get this game in after the lightning delay. Um, we finished. It's 11.46 right now. I think after midnight they couldn't play anymore, so just did manage to get this in. If it would have went to overtime, n who knows yep. what would have happened. But uh, Medina Valley does come away with the victory here. And, it, and explain to the people why it didn't go into overtime. Yeah, it didn't. Be, well, and the, the big play of the game, too, is that blocked extra point. Exactly. And uh, ran, they ran it. Medina Valley ran it back for the two-point conversion, made it a ten-point game. And then the other part of that is that after Lockhart scored to make it a one-possession game, they missed the extra point. They didn't get the, the onside kick, but if they would have, it forced them to would have to have scored a touchdown instead of kick a field goal to try to tie it. And 
you know, Medina Valley just proved to be too much offensively for Lockhart. Their defense just wasn't able to stop the Panthers here this evening. Yeah, and, and on that, that two-point conversion, it was number 30 that, that ran it in, Chris Lopez, for the Panthers. And instead of it being a seven-point game, that extended it back to a, a ten-point game and a, and a two-score two advantage for the Panthers to where that last touchdown they scored, make the extra point or not, that, that would have tied the game up if they'd have made the extra point yeah. had Medina Valley not blocked the special team's kick before that. So... Just a great job by the Panthers. Defense did a great job. Offense did what it had to, and we won the special teams tonight. That's right, and um, I'd like to thank uh, Brendan back at the KMAC Vibe Studios for staying with us here this evening. I'd like to thank Garrison Garza for running the board for us here tonight. I'd like to remind everybody to tune in to our, our show at Sammy's on Wednesday night, and I'd like to remind everybody that uh, – I think volleyball, no, they're not having a game till October 5th on right. the air. But I'd like to remind everybody to, to tune in next Friday night. Uh, the game is going to be at Panther Stadium. That's going to be a big matchup with Bernie Champion. They're coming off a loss to Kerrville Tivy. 30-27 to was the final. So uh, Medina Valley with a chance to go up two games ahead of Bernie Champion at home. Medina Valley beat them at home last year at Panther Stadium. So... Uh, big matchup next week with Bernie Champion. That game will be live right here on the Medina Valley Broadcast Network. 7.30 game time, 7 o'clock will be air time. And the answer to the trivia question would be uh, Mr. Gene Perales was the first one to hit a home run at the youth baseball complex yeah, know, at the airport. I know Maury got some text in for that, but I don't think anybody got the correct nope, answer. Nobody guessed Gene Perales. Um, final score here tonight, Medina Valley 23. Lockhart 19 for Brendan at the station and Garrison and Mari Stein. I'm Jared Lucky saying good night, God bless, and we will see you next Friday night when Panther football continues.